Salon Selectives presents hair so beautiful you feel like you've just stepped out of a salon. Salon Shine! Salon Selectives! Salon Glow! Salon Selectives! Introducing Salon Selectives, new from Helene Curtis. Four salon shampoos, four salon conditioners. You select the combination that will give you salon beautiful hair. Salon Style! Feel salon beautiful every day. Salon Sponsored by Oil of Olay. <laughs> Did you have some kind of mechanism, in a sense, so that you could make sure that you were true to Toykin? Well, we, we, we didn't want to put any of our own, certainly in terms of the thematic material, we didn't want to put any of our own baggage. I mean, we had no interest in putting our messages in, <laughs> into this movie, but we thought that we should honor Tolkien by putting his messages into it. And we thought he cared about things. We, you know, he, you know, the countryside and the, and the, and, and, and the rise of evil. And and he he cared passionately about certain issues. And we thought what we should do to honour him is to make sure that 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 his what he cared about ends up in the movie. That's what we tried to do. Hi, I'm Jeff Bezos. Screw Tolkien. <laughs> I'm a collateral. And I'm here to train you to fight like it, you know. Elindil the Tall, one of the greatest Numenorean warriors, mm. is asking Guy Ladriel, the girl Barian, to train Numenoreans. Let's not bury the lead. This was crap. And it's getting worse. It's Why, getting why is the Young and Restless theme tune, like, banging compared to any music in the show? No, dude. When that came on at the beginning, I'm just like, God damn, this is great. <laughs> I can't even remember any bit of music in this show. It's so forgettable. It is. And yeah, this is another oh. Galadriel episode. <laughs> it's un unbelievable that this passed through this passed this passed by Jennifer Hutchinson, who wrote Breaking Bad episodes and Better Call Saul episodes. And her name is attached to this. There's other writers. Now, I'm not surprised Star Trek Discovery writers are attached to this, too. But hmm. this passed a lot of people, and they thought it was good. They're like, we got it. This is I know I'm reborn. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm calling my review. When I do my own personal review later today, I'm just going to call it an exercise in wasting your time. Absolutely. Can you know this five hours. That's how far we're in. We're far over, in. over five oh, hours. We're finally on a boat to leave Numenor. By the way, that's the end of the episode. We remember they decided to leave last episode, but then they had to dick around for an entire episode to to leave again. So this episode's called uh, "Partings." Uh, I would like to call it "Fartings." It's uh, I actually put that in the description. That's not a nah. spelling. <laughs> that's good. Very convincing. <laughs> Every time Gladriel's walk, he's like. <laughs> Because her ass is so tight, it's kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> I have a new clip, but we got to play it later. <laughs> we got to play it a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, got to get at least that, you know, five, 10 minute mark You're, out of the way. The only good thing is, like, for one, <laughs> she is the new Jody Whitaker. Look at that face right there. It's I've got so many of these thumbnails. I got a full file of her just <laughs> looking like she's. Having a very difficult. Uh, She's healthy. constipated. Yeah, and um, and that's what this show is. It's constipated. <laughs> it really is constipated. It's bad, but it doesn't move anywhere. It doesn't go anywhere. Uh, the dialogue is atrocious. Hey, we got another. The sea is always right. I was so happy that we got that. <laughs> the sea. I was hoping that right. they were gonna fish out Farazon's dead son, and then some dude was just gonna turn around like. <laughs> Grant Gustin on the grave of Green Arrow just go, the sea is always, always right. right. <laughs> <laughs> the memes are already made. <laughs> and like, that's all we could do now, <sighs> folks. I mean, this is such a 
bastardization, vandalism. It's just repurposed. It's they <sighs> repurpose all not all who wander are lost in a song that's freaking terrible. They repurpose. Oh, it's Gandalf. By the way, if there's any question that this is Gandalf, it is Gandalf because of that song. And we'll get to that because that's where he heard it. Right. Oh, no, you're right. And then he'll pass it on to Bilbo somehow who will put it in <laughs> just like the monkey talks. about Aragorn. And it'll all be from female Frodo and female <laughs> Sam and Hobo Baggins. Um, the cockamamie mithril shit that's going on in this. It's oh, right. Okay. Sorry, Gary, but how can you say that you're keeping somebody's oath when you're basically saying, I can't tell you that they've got mithril? <laughs> he's totally like Gilgalaz, like, I don't know what you're telling me. By the way, he's a freaking moron. <laughs> I'm I drunk. Think Gilgalad, we finally see him and he's a he's an idiot. He's a freaking dick and he's an idiot. Thanks. Thanks a lot. But Man, Bronwyn with her, I know I'm not the king you asked for. No, you're not. You're not oh, a king because you're a um, girl. <laughs> Bronwyn, Bron, Bronwyn's blocked me on Twitter. <laughs> I, oh. <laughs> you have my respects up. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess we're not going to have those interracial babies that she always wants. You know? Oh, I know. She is hot. Mm. Um, oh, wait. Who's conflicted? I'm conflicted. <laughs> oh, and, and the the Sauron. I'm sorry, Hal Brand, and, oh. and Guy Ladriel soap opera stuff is <clears throat> just some of the worst. So we're gonna we're gonna share the screen. We're gonna try to go over as quick as possible because like a, a large portions of the show are absolutely nothing. You notice in the recap <laughs> of the previous episodes, they pretty much give you all the actual action that happens in the show. In the recap, you're like, that's all I need. <laughs> Everything else is just kind of establishing shots and walking around and repeating lines. Um, this show has gone nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. Do you know what else went nowhere? What's that? That fucking trench. Because uh, one of the orcs said to Adar, the tunnels are finished. I know. They just finished it. So why were you building a trench then, you dickheads? So they had ample opportunity to tell you who Adar is in this episode? Multiple, and we still have no idea. He don't. He doesn't like being called Sauron. That's all we know. Mm -mm. We find out in episode seven. Well, he. Well, we. It fleshes oh, out a little bit. Seven. Episode seven. Uh, as the One Ring uh, likes to say, repeated by our good friend Disbrew, Hail Disbrew. Um, shows don't get good until season three, anyway. <laughs> My life is wasted. <laughs> wasted they wait till season three it doesn't really work like that no it are the some guy yeah that he's just the some <laughs> some, well, guy. The some guy <clears throat> just some guy uh welcome to uh retro i'll bring up uh, next, next week next week's episode Remember. oh that's so we get the battle next week right we get the oh. Adore, yeah adar and the orcs battling oh you mean the, the battle of the one tower <laughs> the battle of the broken watchtower See? that just so happened to have story story attached to the walls yeah they're like i've seen this i've seen this story before <laughs> right over here three feet away on this fucking wall <laughs> this branch away. oh it's the whole it's story so bad. and they're repurposing the two it's towers it's, tower. just one. it's one tower <laughs> it's a watchtower it's not a fucking keep or some hey mm -hmm. uh, Balsar Galactica fans can remember this uh, Bear McCreary can repurpose his all along the watchtower from Battlestar Galactica in next episode that'd be totally rad dude I wish you'd do something because his music and this is is it's forgettable bad. yeah it's I don't I can't even I couldn't even hum you a piece of music from no, this it is uh Editing is terrible. The worst sore play I've ever seen. It's it goes on too long. You have figured things out long before any character does, and you're just waiting for things to happen. The armor is awful. I can't wait to hear what Shad thinks about nobody. None of the Numenarians' helmets fit right. They're all fucking crooked and shit. 
He's a Numenorian. And then Alindiel the Tall's helmet is like the gayest helmet. <laughs> He's like, let's go, boys. He's got a fucking inbuilt antenna on the side, you know, like for picking up radar or some fucking shit. Oh He's just seen it's just spinning around going boo boo. Hey, Gary, you got a question though. Yeah. What is five minus one? What is five minus one? Four. Three Numenorean ships left. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They had five Numenorean ships. <laughs> one blew up and they have three left. <laughs> I guess it's Numenorean math. <laughs> What is going on? And no, it's Amazon math. So they have five new million <laughs> bazillion people watched our first episode. Two plus two equals five. That's where they went wrong. <laughs> That's where they went wrong. Uh, <laughs> we're not kidding you. This is this this is chocked full of stupid. It and is. Each ship can hold a hundred Numenorean soldiers. So why is there 20? It's about 20 soldiers on one ship. Yeah, where, where are the other guys? They're cuddling down below. <laughs> down below, yeah. Like let's the sea. The sea is always the right. Is always you know right. What I mean? oh! <laughs> the sea's always right, mate. Oh yeah, the sea's always right. This show was doomed to fail. Amazon didn't even have the rights to the Silmarillion or anything else. They're trying to make a story out of appendices. Laugh, ma. Fuck your ass off. <laughs> I'm trying to hold back. We've already dropped like a lot of F-bombs. Sorry. And some gay jokes. <clears throat> well, uh, we start out with... Uh, by the way, welcome, everybody. Uh, I don't know if uh, any mod erotics are up. Thanks. Uh, Me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you, you double duty is... Mod, I mean, big big YouTuber, <laughs> you a mod for me. <laughs> <laughs> He's ever since he got the blue check mark. Nobody knew who I was until I got the blue check mark. That's your grace, by the way. Sorry, your grace. Yeah. Okay. Important. Uh, my wife has not gotten the memo that I have my own parking place in front of the house. My <laughs> blue check mark parking place, and she keeps parking there. She better watch it. Somebody said he was going to make me a sign for my for, for my driveway. I so need it. I so need my blue check marks. Blue check marks in front of my house. <laughs> Nerdrotics blue check mark. Mm -hmm. I'm important now. Oh my god, everything's great. I love Amazon. That's going to get clipped. Uh, okay, so we start out with oh thank God they're back. Those assholes, the Harfoots, <laughs> female Frodo. And not uh, Gandalf. Not Gandalf. Um, he's hey, he's kind of figured out how to talk a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Doesn't have a grasp on basic language, but knows words like peril. Peril, yeah. He can't say like poop <laughs> <laughs> or, or, <laughs> or ice cream. Say, but he can say peril. Yeah. Um me peril. So she uh talks in her uh Oh, they're after me, Lucky Charms, and there's a million ways to die out there on the road. And remember, their whole mantra, the whole Harfoot mantra is nobody leave them behind. And, <laughs> and, wait, leave their ass behind uh, if they walk alone and nobody leaves the path, but then they sing a song about <clears throat> wandering. So their whole thing is to stay together and then they sing a song about wandering off, which makes no sense. Uh, and we'll get to that song. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, homeless uh, uh, meth uh, Gandalf <laughs> and <laughs> female Frodo, who looks like she spent about a week at Burning Man. She looks like she stinks. She, I can smell it from here. Yeah, I really can. and he doesn't look like he smells very, very good. No. Oh my god. But you would think if you were traveling and trying to avoid things like wolves and stone trolls and this, which they do mention. That you wouldn't give your scent away from three miles. You would bathe once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> Riff Magos, you are right. Uh, unless, of course, they're sul insulting uh, me. You can I'm just kidding. You can insult me. Oh, you do already. By the way, I was getting torn apart on Twitter. Ladies. Ladies. Well, it's jealousy. It's a it's absolute jealousy of my font size. Okay. Oh, yeah. 
you know, dude, I'm with you. I was when you were texting me earlier. I was reading my phone like this, <laughs> right? I was always like, put it like here so I could actually get into focus. I'm like, I Jesus, I really need glasses. I posted something from my phone and everybody got to see how big my text is. <laughs> it's big. One word, <laughs> one word and then he just scrolls. <laughs> 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 you know, big All right, text where were coming. we? Uh, Meth Dolph and uh, <laughs> <laughs> Meth are, are learning and, the uh, word and Cara Delevingne, <laughs> right? <laughs> so he figures out the word peril and he thinks, mm. Am I peril? And she's like, No, you're good, which is totally setting up. Uh, uh, remember the wolf track from the first episode? Wow, they finally paid off. It was such a surprise. Paid uh, off in episode five. So if you didn't know from the wolf track from the first episode, five episodes later, it's still dangerous. Uh, they they hunker down in the forest, the old forest for the winter, and then they go to some apple orchard. Um, so I guess it's not winter anymore. Uh, how long would you say the... Uh the wolves were actually in the episode for under a minute yeah okay that's fair enough that's good payoff under a minute well they only had a billion dollars to make this so i mean they have to cut corners somewhere <laughs> yeah small budgets yeah. i mean hey the, the the new zealand landscape looks beautiful mm. it's gorgeous new zealand is gorgeous i wish i could go there uh, <clears throat> not an authoritarian nightmare i'd love mm. to get that um look i mean look at that that it's beautiful it's freaking gorgeous uh and then we I start that's cgi or the actual i hope it's the actual landscape because that is it uh, is that beautiful. might be cgi but there like there's other like this shot right here that's landscape that's mm. yeah that's uh maybe that's not lovely. the background but that like rock formation is awesome so i'm trying to give a compliment that that was it by the way that was it the uh, compliment they, is new zealand's nice <laughs> they, then they then they yeah new zealand's really nice this time of year um they're worried about being left behind and they're worried about the big guy and um sadic burrows and his wives are those his wives or are they <clears throat> They can't be. They, they couldn't have a man have. No, they're wives. like elders or something. Are like sisters get rid of them. and aunts and bail them. They're all fucking each other. Well, yeah, they are. Uh, so then they start singing a song, right? And the song, and they start uh, like the map is back after missing an episode, except the little it, the dots are smaller because of the Harfoots. So they do the little deep, 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 deep. Um, and, uh, my strength tells me no, but my, uh, but the path demands. Yes. Uh, we're going to get, uh, uh, yeah. Fuck this show that not all who wander or wander are lost. Cause remember mm -hmm. wander from Lord of the Rings. Remember. But all who wander. Wandering, 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 wander, wandering, 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 or lost, wandering, wandering, or just shut up. This is from uh, a poem written by Bilbo about Aragorn. What this has to do with them, I don't fucking know. Why are the Harfoots here? I still don't know. Uh, where are they going? I don't care. We are five episodes in. I don't know any of these people. We know that's... Uh, female sam's family got left behind by the asshole for harfoots that's about it and we know little nori little nori she's just a wild one she's just scrappy i, I don't really see it a whole lot they just tell me that a lot mm. scrappy so they repurpose a song they repurpose a poem put it into a song because you got to have the harf the hobbits but we can't call them hobbits so we're going to call them harfoots and they got to be singing because that's tolkien except we're not using any of the actual lore. We're not using any of the actual language. And what lore we are using, we're screwing up. I wonder how the uh, bought and paid for shills and the professors and the scholars all feel right about now. Now that we've seen it. What did you say right before we started, As You said uh, 
you hated being right about it. Yeah, it's just, it's just horrible being right about everything to do with this show. Okay. So they, uh, they're they wandering, and they see wolf tracks. I wonder if we're going to see wolves later. Mm. I wonder. And then we get Chicka Chicka Slim Lady. <laughs> Chicka chicka slim lady. Do they say anything? Do they do anything? Do we find out anything about them? Is this the only scene they're in? As uh in this episode, yes. Yes. We they uh they arrive at uh not Gandalf's uh meteor point, and then they do a lot of looking through scouring eyes. And that's it. That's it. That's them done. Okay. For now. So there's a transition where it says not all who wander or wander lost, blah, blah, blah. And then you see not Gandalf. Then you see the moon. And then I'm going to risk playing this for a second uh, so we can see the transition. Wonder. Oh, my God. I don't want to put this down. Oh, no. 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 So there's Gandalf. <laughs> he, looks at, he looks up at the moon. And then, just in case you forgot where he landed, just in case... <laughs> you're a complete moron they recall the scene for you <laughs> and there it is because we couldn't have figured that out no no you're an idiot uh we don't trust you to remember anything which admittedly this show is very forgettable okay i can't really i couldn't really recall seeing i mean Basic scenes, yeah, but if you ask me to recall specifics, the dude, that that ship's left the uh, that's left the dock. Are you saying that they watch their own show and it's a courtesy? They're like, people are gonna fall asleep. Mm. We need to show them other scenes just in case they wake back up again. Mm. Yeah, well, that's awfully nice of them. Well, so, this well, is this is uh, also to accommodate the influx of all the new viewers. <laughs> 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 okay, here comes you know, so popular. Here comes Slim Lady. Wicka wicka. Wicka wicka. Feminem. Feminem. Uh -oh. It's it's a bunch of girls. It's another girl boss. It's another girl power. Group. My I mean look at the knockers on that dude. I know. That dude's got some pretty decent knockers. Yeah. Um, yeah, better than that. See, I, you know, better than that carpenter at the uh, Canadian school. Yeah. So this is it. Oh, wait, then. So they show where, um, the show where they, uh, sorry, I, I saw the real picture of them, of them. What the knockers, <laughs> the knockers, no, not the knockers. <laughs> and then they look at it and then mm. they look at us. Hmm. Like we saw in the trailer. And that's <laughs> why are they acting like this? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I can't hear you. I'm up here. <laughs> I said, I think this is the spree landed. I think this is where Sauron, the Dark Lord, landed. What? <laughs> Well, we think it is anyway. Let's, we'll follow him. He stinks. Yeah. <laughs> I can smell him from here. Oh, my goodness. And then we have Arda. We, oh, okay. Oh, we, do, we, do, we do find something out. This is fuck. This is effing retardo. <sighs> Adar. What does it say here? Adar's tolerance of the sun. Hence. Uh, that he is not an orc. You, you don't he's think an he's an elf? Orc? He's an elf. Are, are we supposed <laughs> to think he's an orc? An elf. <laughs> or he seems to possess some gifts of the elves, immortality, and the ability to stand in daylight without distress. His children, the orcs, avoid its painful glares by using su uh, sun cloaks to keep its rays off their skin. Wow. White boys. I told, and by the way, the white hoods. On the white orcs, which the orcs look terrible this episode, by the way. It's like they they 
they used all the extras and they used the extra makeup that's supposed to be for long shots and they decided to shoot him close. Do you know Star Trek Insurrection? I try to forget it. It reminds me of the Baku. Yeah. But the one but the ones who left the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Who keep having to have the skin grafts. Yes. That was, you know what? what I mean, compared to what we got now, masterpiece. <laughs> it was just a good episode. That I would say it's like an average Star Trek episode as a movie. It was fine. Um, so he wants to uh, take, take out the sun. <clears throat> That's his goal. He wants to take out the sun. He said he's going to miss it. Yeah. Might get a bit cold. <laughs> you know how the two lamps were destroyed and the two trees were destroyed? Well, he wants to take out the sun. <clears throat> uh, I, was, or, I was hoping he wasn't talking literally. I, I was hoping that he was... Oh, the light. Uh, he's, he's, it's the volcano. The ash is going to go up into the atmosphere and it's going to block the sun. That's what it is. So, yeah. He wants to... Yeah, he wants to... Uh, Block all the light, which we'll find out later. Um, elves uh, were born in the dark. <laughs> yes, there was <laughs> no light. Sun, uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. They're they're fine in the dark. <laughs> couple of trees, you know, nice couple of trees doing a bit. Trees, yeah. When they were in the blessed realm, they got to see it, but not all elves got to see it. I'll bring on uh, the professor later to explain it. I've got I've got a clip. I've got a clip of the professor explaining it. So he wants to take, he wants to block the sun, block the sun. He's all, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss it, which ties into the Mithril later. <clears throat> yes. Which, by the way, is not 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 from the lore at all uh like elrond's you know elrond's dad is uh is in a um is in a ship made of mithril and elven glass supposedly according to bilbo but um, pretty funky yeah pulling across posh, a star posh gear. uh then we get to bronwyn <laughs> She does this speech going, follow me, you know. Yeah, it's really. You know, I know I'm not the, the anointed king, but follow me and, and, and we shall fight in the orcs and ting. And then she literally, like, when we come back to her in a little bit, she's just like, oh, maybe we're all just a bunch of assholes and we're all deemed to uh, just uh, follow Sauron, I guess. She had a quick change of heart. Well, she didn't really give a very good speech. She's all, I know I'm not the king. That's a bad English accent, but I don't care. I'm not the king you asked for because I've got teats. But you got to fight with me because we have to fight. That was her. Mm. If we don't fight, we'll die. And uh, mm. they started going, yeah, so who's with me? And then uh, evil, toxic white male goes, the one who went, have you heard of Saturn, boy? Oh no, we're not gonna fight with you. Ever it is all when we when when we weren't with them and like when we were allied with Morgoth, his big his big explanation was we lived. That was it. We we lived. And everybody went, Yeah, let's go, dude. Let's go totally surrender to all the very white orcs. And they left. And uh, mm. Inselnor went with them. Poor Inselnor. Gone too soon. Gone too soon. You know, he did kind of look like Wade from Obi-Wan. <laughs> he looks very similar to Wade. It's too early to talk about Wade. Pour one out for Wade! And Inselnor, everybody. Mm. Uh. So she doesn't convince anybody. Who among Why you would she? and fight? Uh, crab, I don't know. God, oh, you know, Middle Earth was known for its feminism. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, why isn't the right? If there was any sort of realism here, it'd be the elf 
who was ste- who was stepping forward yep. to say, you know, once we watched over you to see if you would turn, you know, back to the to the dark lord, but now I'm asking you to stand with us and together we will defeat that's how it should have gone down. But no, they needed some, you know, five foot three um feminist uh to step forward and, and literally say, I am not qualified remotely. Well, we agree on one thing straight away then. But you know who is qualified? The guy behind you. Yeah. Don Lemonless. Don Lemon, yeah. Guess who's coming for second breakfast? Or guess who's coming to Elevensies? And it doesn't say much that half of the people are just like, fuck this bitch, let's go. <laughs> We'd rather take our chances with the orcs. That doesn't say, you know, if Aragorn was up there and Aragorn was giving a speech and then some fucking stinking hobo just went, fuck this Aragorn twat. Let's you, go out there with the fucking not, orcs. Do you not get Blazing Saddle vibes from this a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to welcome our new. <laughs> <sighs> Jeez, man! I think he said the sheriff is near. <laughs> yeah, the sheriff is near. Yeah. Where do I have a minute? Oh, oh the, yeah, it's just look at him. Why are you following this dude? This dude had five potatoes and stinks of piss. I'll say this of our ancestors. <laughs> this is it. They lived. Everybody's all, yeah, they like crowd totally agreed and uh, like lived and stuff. Look at his hair. <laughs> he just stepped out of a salon. Salon selective. And everybody else looks like they've been rolling in their own feces. I know I have. <clears throat> oh, he's called Rowan. There you go. I've, what Rowan? Five, five episodes. Got to know his name. Uh, Treadwell. <laughs> uh, Fellowship of the Ring. Read the book, and they have this fucking shit on oh, it. Oh, Waldrick. Oh, I thought they were calling him Baldrick, not Waldrick. Baldrick. I was like, oh my god, is that a black hat of reference that they're trying to slide in there? Jesus. No. They can't even slide Tolkien references in. You're looking for Black Hatter references. <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so uh, <laughs> half, the t- half the town leaves, and honestly, I can't blame them. <laughs> but, can we call? Can we call the woman Blacked Obama? <laughs> but what? Blacked Obama? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Just say. We could call her Michael Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I am not the first lady. <laughs> oh my god. I got news. Oh, for you. I got news. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Woo. Numenor. Numenor. Oh, there was extra hours today, wasn't there? Numenor. Look at all those CG ships. And that real port that they built. And everybody oh, looked, looked okay. Getting ready to go. Lendil's all, what's up? C's always right. Hey, C's always right. C's always right. <laughs> the horse right. is getting lifted. C's, C's always horse. right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and this is, oh. Sild- Sildor is like useless. I mean, I can't stand him. Like, this, sh- he should be honestly the centerpiece of this show. More than Galadriel, more than Elendil, he should be the absolute centerpiece of the show. And he's, uh, uh, he's, he's like a dopey hipster. What if you were just like working on the docks and it's like, I need to take a cigarette break. You just took a cigarette break. Oi, she's always right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, oh, yeah, you got me there, I guess. I bet you better go for another cigarette break then. <laughs> Have some of that pipe. I gotta, I gotta sleep with your wife. She's always right. <laughs> She's always right. Yeah. Dude, I got a confession to make. I fucked your wife. How dare you? I'm gonna stab you. Oi, mate. She's always right. C- the C put her in my path. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, Mike, she was wetter than the fucking sea as well. Wait, wait. Okay. She's always right. There is so much forced drama here. So uh, uh, Elendil is still mad at him for quitting. So he's not letting him volunteer. I don't know why they need volunteers. Numenor has an army, has an army. I, know, I, I, I never got that bit. Now, but all of a sudden they're isolationist and they're volunteer. And not to get too far ahead of myself, they have not colonized any part of Middle Earth. They're not doing any trade. They aren't accepting any tribute because they mentioned that's what they're going for. So Numenor has been isolationist the whole time. A nationalistic isolationist island. Fuck this show. Um, oh, we need to give girl Sildor something to do. So she doesn't want anybody to go to war. So she goes to Kemen to talk uh, Farazon, who's supposed to be our Farazon, out of it. That's it. That's what she exists for. Um, I am just not seeing the female energy that she is supposed to be bringing to this show. I thought she was just supposed to lather this thing in estrogen. Because you know what? When we crack open J.R.R. Tolkien, that's what we look for. Estrogen. No more sword and sandals fantasy. Not saying Tolkien's that, but we got sassy and sandals now. Sassy and sandals. We're in the worst timeline. I blame CERN. I blame CERN. So they have a useless conversation. She's like, you need to stop this war. Why does she care? Is she, so she's worried about her brothers and her dad. Okay. But she just got accepted to Numenor University. She's well on her career path. She don't need no man. She don't need no man. So uh, guess what? Sauron, I'm sorry, Halbrand is in the forge. Forging. Leave me alone, I'm forging. I'm forging. I'm totally going to make rings. Rings. Because I'm totally not Sauron, even though we've been telling you for months now that this yeah. guy's Sauron, because we know. <laughs> and, but it's it's so painfully obvious now. I would like... I've got a question, Gary. I'll make why is he forging when he's why is he forging when he hasn't earned his seal from the guild? That's a very good question. It was a big deal. Oh no, he got one. He's got one. I don't know. He must have like really studied hard and got <laughs> through the guild. Uh, or we just did a massive time jump. I, I don't quite know. A bit of those, quite a few of those. But he didn't have one at the end of the last episode when he they were just not. about to get ready to depart. And then this episode, they were just like, hey, up, instead of departing, let's not. And he managed to get his Forge uh, Boy Scout thing. Yeah, he's got... He, yeah, so he's he got managed, his thing, yeah. Yeah, he got it off... I, like, I guess he went to uh, trade school. He went to Newman well, trade school. It lasted a day! It lasted a day. <laughs> They don't give a shit. No. They don't give a shit, they, Gary. Uh, oh, no. They, they they said these brainlets will slap up oh. anything. <laughs> I mean, look at, look at those Disney Star Wars fans. They'll lap up anything. <sighs> By the way, I think we should point out that uh, a certain uh, pair of cat ladies, um, one of them who used to work for Disney Star Wars, uh, decided to write a very libelous, <laughs> slanderous <laughs> article about us again. Well, I guess it's libel. Libel's written. I got to remember that from. Mm, I learned libel, that from Spider Man yeah. too. I didn't know the fucking difference. To be honest with you, told it. But um, this is slander. No, it's not. It's libel. They decided. They decided <laughs> to wade into Tolkien and Lord of the Rings. And I just have some unsolicited advice. For one, if you want to clear Disney Marvel stands from your timeline on Twitter just start talking about lord of the rings they will flee because that is a fandom uh that requires reading an actual book so uh it'll be way out of their league and they'll just get bored and they're like oh reading boring i need my tiktok clips of she hulk and they'll leave but rewriting ripley you're doing the same thing you are you are disney star wars fans not star wars fans there's there's a difference there's star wars fans 
There's Disney Star Wars fans. You're Disney Star Wars fans. Uh, don't don't wait in. You'll drown here. <clears throat> you'll drown here. But C is want, always right. C is always right. <laughs> <laughs> don't wait into these waters. It requires an above room temperature IQ. Okay. All right, so uh, Sauron, sorry, Halbrand is forging. He got his little badgy wadgy. And then we go to mm -hmm. Queen Muriel and we get our first Gyladriel appearance. And it'd been so not pleasant, Bore. yes, boring, Bore. but not like horrifically unpleasant until she showed up. Uh, and they're trying to convince him to go with them to war in the Southlands to reunite his people because he is supposed to be the Aragorn of the South. He's all, I'm on, I'm, I was the Aragorn born on the South side of Middle Earth. West side, motherfucker, West side. West side, South side. Um, gonna go and uh, he's not really convinced. He wants to stay. He just wants to stay in Forge. Because he's Sauron. <laughs> um, Galadriel. Yeah, do these swords? Why don't we do a ring? <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. Wouldn't a ring be cool? Look at like that's her face the whole entire episode. <laughs> oh, it's it. it, it I, I tweet out. It, her face just turns milk sour. I mean, she's. I, Every time she's on screen, she just sucks all the life out of everything. Awful. Just the worst character ever. This woman is, uh, every time she argues with somebody, she gets involved in a victimhood argument. Like somebody, he'll be like, what What was your pain? Oh, I, you know, my, I, I lost my brother. Well, you know, how did you lose your brother? He, he was killed. By the, you know, the darkness. Well, I have lived in darkness. Well, I, I've done more darkness living than you've done darkness living. She just tries to one-up the fucking victimhood every time. I've suffered more than you've suffered. I'm always going to be the most insufferable. You are definitely insufferable. <laughs> uh, the land is always wrong because it's a man. <laughs> yeah. The land is always wrong, but the sea is always right. What does that mean? So you know that big wave that destroys Numenor? Yep. The sea was always right. The sea was always right. I think that's what uh, they're trying to say. Oh, and they, boy, do they foreshadow that with Farazhan's first lines that we'll get to. Well... All right. You, well, you tell me what Far Farazon said that was wrong, please. Because <clears throat> I'm still stumped on that. Um, Farazon is supposed to be like, they're, they're trying to make him like the little finger of <laughs> like, he is calculated, he is conniving, and he's playing the long game. Like that's that's what, and but we'll get to that. And he's not wrong. Uh, his, except, yeah, his long game is setting up trade routes. Yeah, you know all this like good stuff. You know, we're gonna cross to the Southlands. We're gonna help, but then then we're gonna set up trade routes, and then we'll be able to trade with them, which will prosper Numenor. And I'm sort of thinking, where is this guy wrong here? You know, Guy Ladriel will be fucking out of here, so we would have got rid of the elf. Okay, and then yeah. something's like, ooh, ooh, my dad's Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, but he, you know, he, he he's not wrong. So this whole episode is, we need to convince Halbrand to come with us to go to war, and this lasts the whole. Episode, why is Scott? I can't. Hi, Scott Lawyer. I see you, Colin. 
but I'm in the middle of a live stream right now. Is it important? <laughs> <laughs> did I, did something happen that I'm not supposed to know? <laughs> um, but, uh, what's up, Scott, the lawyer. Uh, the theme of this show is see you next Tuesday is always right. <laughs> and Lou, that was from, uh, that was from Sophia B powerhouse for $10. Thank you for five Australian dollars. Luca Pilpovic, uh, says as a Disney star Wars fan, I ye love yelling at random people about diversity and clapping at everything Disney does while also never sending a cent while, while never spending a cent. If you Did don't you see the, cent, um, that's the good. high seas ratings. I did. I did. Actually, Perry told me about those all over the weekend. I, oh, I don't know how Perry knows. Uh, Perry does a lot of research for me. That's it. That's it. Love you, Perry. According, yeah, Tartu, uh, Tortuga uh, much prefers the House of the Dragon by 127%. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It was, week one was like 41%. And then episode two was like 123% or something. Oh, oh yeah. And the quartering did a video on it today. Uh, 5,000 one-star reviews were removed from Amazon Prime today. Uh, they were sitting at about 15,000 reviews, which is pathetic already, uh, which I had noticed they are now down to 11,000. So uh, a little under. It's all fudged. It's all fudged anyway. Even the, even the pre-5,000 getting removed. It was still fudge because there's no way there's only been 15, 16,000 worldwide reviews on this. <clears throat> my review was an up and my review's been okayed. And so, and my review is an up. And I, because I've been looking. Yeah, my review, there. my review disappeared. I mean, it might have been because I said one star Guy Ladriel. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of Guy Ladriel, you might assume that you used me. So, this whole conversation was. I need you to fight. I don't want to fight. You use me. Ah, uh, no. I would assume that you use me. What? Okay. Hit fuck. Nah, nah. But it didn't, this didn't make any sense because he was he, he was just like you use me, and then she says I did this, I did that, I did this. So some could assume that you use me. What? You've just said everything that you did to manipulate. manipulate. I Bitch, you got on my raft. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Sauron, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I'm hot Sauron. I'm this hot bitch. Sauron. I can change him. <laughs> One thing you need to change is the, the amount of rings of power content on your channel, because there's none. <sighs> That yeah, so oh, you'd be the super fans that have not talked about it except one did and said, I'm gonna wait till I'm done watching House of the Dragon. <laughs> well, they they answered a question, they just answered a question on a, on a, an Instagram live stream saying, Have you watched Rings of Power? and they said, No, I'm gonna binge it when it's finished because I think House of Dragon's much better, or I'm enjoying House of Dragon. So that's you know i wouldn't say that was actual content about rings of power and none of them none of the four that were there the th well the three that were there none of them have done a single video tiktok anything about rings of power these are tolkien super fans people super fans that they got taken to a castle to watch a man piss um Here's the video, but it's, it's, well, is there anything like even the guy I mean, that does books, he didn't even do like the Lord of, you know, like the Lord of the Rings trilogy or the Hobbit or something be just before it released to try and... House of the Dragon or Rings of Power. Well, okay. I haven't watched Rings we'll of Power it. yet because I'm going to binge it. I don't want to watch them both at the same time. And re House of the Dragon. Sorry. Sorry to All interrupt right. you there. But this is, this is the She's got such fan. a lovely voice. She does. <laughs> Here's the super fan. Well, it's in our chat, right? So I, you know, I want to compromise all the dick pics I've sent to everybody. So, oh my god, <laughs> just kidding. We know you sent them. So this is the super fan from the super fan video. Which is better, House of the Dragon or Rings of Power? Well, I haven't watched Rings of Power yet because I'm going to binge it. I don't want to watch them both at the same 
same time. And re- House of the Dragon started first. So I'm, I was already taken. So I've got to wait. So I don't know. But so far, House of the Dragon's really good. So <laughs> Rain's Power's got to do big things if it's going to be better than that one. Super fan! <laughs> Super fan, <laughs> dude. What and- happened to your girl Galadriel? Galadriel, dude, dude. Everything has gone wrong for Amazon. I could, I could see Jeff Bezos. He's got that big wooden thing that was made from from the titles. He's just, he's broken that thing into a million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's that. thrown it on the fireplace. He's just burnt it, <laughs> dude. Oh my god, um. Biggest flop in television history. We're already here. We're already here. Won't be announced. Won't be official. I'm telling you, this is the biggest flop in television history. Not history. Maybe history. Maybe history. History. Look how short she is. Oh, she's tiny. Six foot four. Tiny. Yeah, she's five foot three in real life. Mm. Um. So yeah, she's like, uh, leave the hobbits behind. Uh, watch out, there's wolves. Uh, watch out for them wolves. And then we finally get Those the wolves. awful CGI wolves. Who they look terrible? To... They just look crap. Yeah, so you would have been better, are... like taking a big dog and just putting like some some you know prosthetics on, and then maybe a little CGI to enhance a few things. But look at they look I mean, what the fuck is that? Hey, they only had a billion dollars as. I know, that's fine. They had to cut back a little bit. I'm sorry. I get it. I get it. Small indie company. It just doesn't look real. They don't look there. No. Yeah, it, it's it doesn't look like a billion dollars. I mean, She Hulk looks worse, but um they didn't spend a billion dollars on She-Hulk. I mean, they spent, if they spent more than $10, they spent too much. By the way, video on She-Hulk coming soon. Edited Oof. by Perry Chan. Oof. Coming soon. Coming soon. I wish, I wish She-Hulk wouldn't come soon. What did I, I know. But right. if you buy her a plate of chips, she'll spread her legs. Oh, dude, yeah. Mm. Uh, the wolves, I just said bad CG wolves. Uh, not Gandalf scares them away and bruises his arm. Mm. The end. That that was it. So that whole setup from the first episode, as was not kidding, it's a minute. It's a minute. You saw it in the trailer. And uh, then it's my favorite scene. My favorite scene in all. Oh. Okay. So remember the jailbreak last episode said that was the worst, most cr- cringe scene in uh in the rings of power, it has been supplanted <clears throat> by something worse. Worse. Much worse. Much, much worse. They are untested against this foe, she tells Elendil the Tall. Then Elendil the Tall goes, Well, you're an elf. Why don't you train my men for me and uh, strap on? <laughs> Strap right. on and oh wait, my wife's dead. Uh I've got a to, question, go Gary. I've got a question, mate. Yeah. So Guy Ladriel mm-hmm. and Ellen Dill, mm-hmm. they have a very brief, like one sentence each conversation in Elvish to say this. Yeah. Then later, when we're actually in Linden. The elves do not speak in Elvish to each other. Nope. And <sighs> yeah, I, I. <clears throat> it, it comes and goes, kind of like the rolling R's, dude. The rolling R's just kind of come and go too. Exactly. That's that's. I mean, what else do we get, Mister Reese? I feel you. <laughs> you don't want dead air, but like this show is dead space. Mm. 
silence for effect. That's what it was. It was supposed to be a dramatic mm. pause. But kind of like, remember when um, Gilgalad is about to tell Aron something? We'll get there. And he's all, but he waits and pauses to tell him the rest so they can walk to a more dramatic place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you really did. And he wants it raw, Doc. <clears throat> all right. No, the, be ready. Be ready for some cringe, ladies and gentlemen of the two genders. Uh, be ready for some cringe. Uh, if you're stopped up, you might not want to watch this this uh, this whole thing go down. So again, Alendil the Tall asks Guy Ladriel to train the Numenorians. And oh boy, I even t- I put this out on Twitter. I am worried for Shad. I am genuinely concerned as a friend, fellow human being for Shad when he sees this sword play. He's going to have an aneurysm. So when you're watching Shad later, right after this live stream, just prepare him. He's already seen it, but just like tell him to kind of take it easy. You know, that vein in his forehead can only pulsate so far. Um, They're untested against this foe. So by the way, they're using real swords. <clears throat> it just been funny if one of them just cut her head off immediately. Uh, it would have been funny. And she basically says, uh, cause you're dumb Numenorians, I'm just gonna keep it simple. So yeah. they grab the swords. There are many ways to kill an orc, but for you, I will keep it strong and simple. Stab, twist, gut. Come at me. Now I have I have a clip. <laughs> Did she do this? She, she <laughs> almost <laughs> did <laughs> But I have a clip. <clears throat> I <clears throat> I added my own a little little bit here. There are many ways to kill an orc. But for you, I will keep it strong and simple. Stab, twist, gut. Come at me. All I know is that I can play. <laughs> Gary, yeah, <laughs> I do not want to disrespect Galadriel from the House of the Light, Commander of the Northern Armies. Scourge of the Earth. Fucking sticking a fucking sword in somebody is pretty much a basic way to fucking kill them. So you're sending all of these men and <clears throat> women out to fight orcs, and they don't know how to fucking stab somebody with a sword. No. Well, it turns out that n- not only do the Nor- Numenorians not, ho- no, not know how to sword fight, turns out Guy Ladriel doesn't know how to sword fight either. <laughs> so there is some of the worst effing editing that I could try to show you some. I'm, I know I'm totally pushing it, but like, I mean, we can fight this later. This is absolutely transformative. This is transformative. It is transformative. So let's it transformed a, a, a beloved franchise into dog shit. shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty transformative. <laughs> I laugh because um, <laughs> it's true. What do we have really. I know. You, if you didn't laugh, you'd just cry. If you didn't laugh, you'd just cry. I break monitors with every single action figure head I have in here. <laughs> So Alindale says you'll get a promotion if you beat the five foot three she elf. <laughs> Do you know in this week's Hulk, the, the show forgot that Jen wasn't the Hulk and, and she got punched by a superhuman 30 feet and was fine. I didn't cave her face in like uh, no. Sir Joffrey Longmouth from uh, House of the Dragon <laughs> who had his face caved in. Same thing would have happened. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I mm. did. I did watch She Hulk. It took me an hour to watch a twenty-three <sighs> minute episode. It was freaking bad. So, all right. So I'm gonna try to play as much as I can of the sword play in this because it is fucking hilarious how bad it is. It is. Oh. Look at she's ready to go. Now you can see. Wait, real quick. Remember, Morphin Clark required therapy. Because mm. all of the men coming at her made her flinch too much. You can see some of that here. I think you can. But you know, all, Gary, before you go, 
all of this is done in service of promoting uh, Isildur's friend to lieutenant so Isildur can say to his friend who's lieutenant, can I come along? Yeah. Oh, what's his name again? Uh, uh, Halbrand. <laughs> no. Valendil. Antimo. Oh, no, Antimo's the other guy. Valendil's this guy. Oh, the Valendil. That's right. Oh, Valendil. Valendil. Antimo. Yeah, he basically tells Antimo <laughs> that you're my fake friend as well later. Here we go. What, what stance is that? <laughs> It's oh my god, Shad's against... already gonna fucking he's oh, oh no 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 stop it wait till they start stop fighting it. wait till they stop fighting <laughs> stop it already stop when she did that first I f <sighs> okay okay God, it's so hard to watch this show. It is really hard. Wait, it gets worse. Notice how they, they keep putting, like, they go behind beams and keep mm. cutting away and something all of a sudden gets in front of the screen when Morpha Clark has to do any kind of a move. Then they stand there. Elinda's going, man, I like this one. I'm surprised he didn't say that. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, I like this. this for, like, by a mile. Look at this. <laughs> What's was he shooting? What's he shooting for? The real Galadriel head at six foot four. Well, look, his head turns the other direction when he swings. He's not even looking when he swings. No. Um. And then men grunting. Yeah, men you got that right. Grunting, and then cut away. Oh, th what the fuck was that? The he waited and he waited to swing as well. She like pushed him away with her elbow, like it was just like a. <sighs> but he was swinging for a head. What if, what if he just cut a fucking head off in training? This would have made more sense if there were wooden swords. Or just something that was non-lethal. Wait, we gotta get where she... Wait. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're behind a beam again. And then we're behind people. Cut. Here's a, Oh, wait, here comes cut. a third part. Watch this part. Cut. Cut. Where's the part where she jumps? I got the picture of it. <laughs> oh, is she just each? Is she slapping him on the ass with her sword? She is. Yeah, she's, she is. She does. Yeah. Dude, she's slapping with the flat blade. It wouldn't hurt. Did I miss the part where she flips up in the air all joyfully? I think it's after this. I think it's after. I think, I think this is the next. The next barrage, maybe. Oh, wait. I want to see her flipping two swords again. Oh, God. She's so... <laughs> Look at this one. She's so obnoxious. Behind the beams. Yeah. <sighs> I like this one. Oh, yeah, there you go. It doesn't even... Mm. Nope. Fight with your feet, not with your arms. I'd punch her in the stomach right there. <laughs> I'd come punch her. <laughs> oh, wait, here comes the men grunting. All right. We're going to need to pause for transformative purposes. So look at this guy. Dead to rights. She's dead. He's going to embed that freaking sword <laughs> in that <laughs> little freaking guy ladriel head. Nope. Charge! Oh, no, missed. Totally missed. What if he cut his mate's fucking arm off? Elf is oh, yeah, they did, the, they did the whole Galadriel's, Galadriel's fighting! Galadriel's Galadriel fighting! He's doing the whole Neo, Neo and Morpheus are oh. fighting! Neo and Morpheus, Morpheus are fighting. fighting! Yes! Oh, my God. Okay, here we go. Dual sword guy Ladriel. Cut away from Guy Ladro. Cut away behind a beam. Uh, cut away. Oh, cut. oh here we go. Oh, Here's my favorite. Cut. Cut. It's like a dance. It's a dance, baby. Okay. 
Slow pausing. swords clashing. Numenorians, Numenorian. Numenorian. The C is How always is writing. Chad? Or is it Ch is it Chad from She Hulk? <laughs> what the, yeah. Chet, whatever his name is. Well, look at this huge crowd, by the way. This huge crowd of Numenorians. Uh, Half of the them Numen are actually in the training school. That's Numenorian. Hey, Numenorian Asian guy in the back. Nest. Asian guy. Asian Numenorian at the back. Hey. Oh, my God. X-ray hey. girl can feel seen. Yeah. X-ray girl, that was for you. Now you're no longer just a smelly half up. Oh, oh, oh. Here we go. Oh, oh my God, that's terrible. Oh, oh no. Oh. 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 <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to die. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Oh. <laughs> it is so bad. This show cost a billion dollars, dude. A billion. What, what did this first season cost? Like 600 million? It was, four, it was 465. 465 plus, million plus to begin with. Yeah. But that doesn't count the rights. So it's well over 600 million for this first season. And then they, uh, some of the other uh, bled into the second, which I'm sure is going into the brand new studio that they're building. Uh, they are not in production yet, by the way. Uh, I won't go into production until you get a proper script. Okay, so that is some got that. Okay, they did the the editors did the best they could hiding Morphic Clark's horrific ability to do any kind of sword play. What the fuck were they thinking? Hiring this woman? I'm sorry. Like, I'm sure she's fine in other stuff. I, I'm talking about her performance in a billion dollar thing where they they made she didn't even know she was Guy Ladriel until she got there. Mm -hmm. And this isn't Galadriel. This is modernism. This is intersectional feminism. Uh, and the this is the worst example. This is worse than Captain Marvel. It's up there with Doctor Who. It really is. But this is freaking bad. This is such a vandalization of a great female character. A great female character that could have been fantastic if adapted and written properly. And everybody would have fucking loved her. Everybody loves her. In Fellowship and in the Peter Jackson trilogy, they love her from the books. This is a popular character. So it's not unlike She-Hulk. You took a character that a lot of people liked and you completely turned it into something it wasn't to push your own message into something you know nothing about. Nothing. And that's and why they hate nerds. <laughs> that's why they hate fans because they think we make them look bad. No, they make themselves look bad because they're fucking morons. That's why they want to call us racist, because we know more about this story than they do. We know more about this character than they do. And they hate that. This is, a, this is an embarrassment. This is an embarrassment. You have tied, Amazon, you have tied your fucking brand to this one. And quite frankly, I'm glad it turned out this way. I'm dead. Y your decision, this is all on you. Mm -hmm. trying to push all this shit on us. By the way, rewriting Ripley is like two weeks late. The whole racist narr narrative died in like 48 hours. Once people started actually watching our videos and going, you know what? Yeah, I like I like Galadriel. I do. Uh, this ain't Galadriel. And, and Forbes people, saying, why is the writing so terrible? <clears throat> and people saying, well, I liked the first episode or two, but... Then I realized that it's not. So, oh, look, you can do 180s. We'll be okay with that. You know, you, you do your 180s. You do your 180s, but you, and you can you can criticize it now as, as much as you want. We won't. We won't. I told just, you so. Yeah, just yeah, just know you're a racist now. Yeah, yeah. And just know that you were you were bought and paid for by an organization. Mm -hmm. And uh when you realize what side the fucking sun was shining. Then you decided to change your ways. Just always remember that. But this is trash. Yep. And this was embarrassing. And I'm and I'm still wondering why a, 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 a seafaring folk with soldiers are training volunteers to go to the fucking Southlands. 
and they need to be trained by the very thing that they supposedly hate now. So is it just a few people who don't like, like are all the, the, the volunteers are fine, but like, there's supposed to be a bunch of hatred towards the elves for no apparent reason. By the way, they're supposed to be jealous and they have not stated that yet. We are five episodes in and they are not giving us the reason why the Numenorians. Well, didn't Muriel, Muriel herself question Elendil because his name means friend of elves? And she was like, do you? Are you still? Are you one of them? And now everyone's just like, yeah, yo, high five, glad you help. Fuck yeah. yeah. Those not beers for our jobs. <laughs> yeah. Well, Halbrand took their dub. He did. Oh, my God. In my video, I was laughing. I, when Quarter Black Garrett was mi mixed it in with <laughs> South Park, and you hear Quarter Black, oh, they took our jobs. Those knife ears. <laughs> yes, <laughs> those knife ears. <laughs> oh, I was fucking laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine him recording that? Like his four kids are outside. Listen, what is dad doing? Those nafirs took her yeah. jabs. <laughs> <laughs> just being silly. He's yeah, just we being do. Silly. We we sit there and we talk to ourselves in these rooms, right? And like, I'm totally unaware of anything <laughs> in the world. I get out. I get. I'm like screaming in here, and I go outside, and like my wife's like doing somebody's hair, and they're like, "Hi!" I'm like, "Oh, hi!" Did you hear everything I said? Oh shit! <laughs> Sometimes I, I I always try and shut the window before I do like a video or a stream. There have been multiple times over summer I looked up and realized that the, the window was open the whole time. So oh, so dude. my neighbors are just getting me literally screaming out of a window for three hours. <laughs> um, my neighbor right before we left, I was I was alone, and he's like, "Who's George?" Because <laughs> I kept screaming, "George, George!" <laughs> <laughs> That's why I had to tell him. Uh, I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> did, you, did you reply with he's got a beautiful soul? <laughs> he's got a beautiful ass, and I'm screaming his name. <laughs> George, George. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got news for you. <laughs> news for you. This is Kevin. This is uh uh uh, Donald Farazan's son, who looks like Karl Marx. There's a lot of mixed metaphors going on here. Yeah, this is... <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's all, assert your influence and stop this war because this really pretty girl who's got crazy-ass eyes, man. I'm sorry. She is... Girl Sildor is, is beautiful. I'm sure she's a very nice person, but man, she's got like restraining order eyes. Not like Betty Davis' <laughs> eyes. Restraining order eyes. That's She's funny. got restraining order <laughs> eyes. <laughs> um, but look, she, have you noticed how many times, like decisions like this, are facilitated off a woman telling a man to do a thing? Oh, almost everything in this. That's going to go in the final video. But every action is almost every action. We're mm. we're talking like ninety percent of them are precipitated by a female telling the guy what to do yes. and this is deliberate like even disa was suggesting stuff to, yes to durin and elrond and, and bronwyn was telling uh don lemonless what you know like yes she basically you know like come up with something come up with something galatabiel and miriel here in numenor Dude, Alindil reminds me of Pike from Star Trek Discovery. Like they brought in Pike and he just stood there like with his hands over his um crotch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, yeah. He's like, I'm nice, but I am absolutely completely inoffensive. And, and I am it. an ally to women. And it's so annoying because uh Lord, I think it's called Lloyd Owen, the actor who plays Elendil, he's a really good actor. Yeah, he is. And it's like and it, it, if given a good script, he could be a very convincing Alain deal. And why does, why is, um, I don't even know the, the woman with the very nice breasts name, but why is uh, she even remotely interested in that Femi boy? Um, because the script requires it to happen because they needed to add the fake sister to add female energy to a show that's nothing but 
it what's there's no energy i don't, I don't want to blame this on there's no energy in this uh the no. only energy i feel is annoyance <laughs> and frustration every time more more fear clark uh, opens her pie hole so i could add some anger to that yeah a little ang a lot of anger a lot of anger sometimes the folly of youth is enough to make an old man weep yeah, look, like, can we can we actually go through what what Farazon says because I'm not sure where he's going wrong here. Well, first he like, hey, just in case you're not sure Numenor is going to fall into the ocean, he gives you a little hint here. It is folly to try to stop a war. Uh, it is folly to kick against the current. Uh, but here it comes. You see, the tide may rise and drown a man. Because, like, mm. Numenor is totally going to fall into the ocean if you didn't get it from the whole double vision we got last episode, just in case you forgot. But that's due to debauchery and shit. Well, it's supposed to do, yeah, it's due to human sacrifices, but that's not even it. It's 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 invading the Blessed Lands. They They are not supposed to go there, and they bring an army and invade. Oopsies. Oopsie doopsie. So... The Valar, who at that time, like they can't, they had to go to Iru Iluvatar and say, uh, yeah, well, you need to do something about this. Like men are here, like in our realm. So he's all, I'll take care of that. Yeah, but they've gone to completely the other side. <laughs> you see, I know they went to the wrong side. You see the tide <laughs> may rise and drown a man or fall and sweep him out to sea. Uh, the trick of mastering the current is to know <laughs> what which is way to go. Show? But a single-handedly preventing, dragging us back into the old ways. Don't tell me you couldn't sway, Muriel, blah, blah, blah. And he basically tells uh, his dad, he's like, Dad, are you going to, like, take orders from an elf? And he goes, and he gets really mad, and he's all, elves will be taking orders from us. This is why we're going here. We're going to go save the low men from the Southlands, and we're going to open trade and barter and get tribute and they mm. will owe and we will we will give them their king back and that king will owe us a great debt what's wrong with that what's and wrong with nothing, that nothing at all that makes perfect sense and what this show needed to do was set up the palantir and tar palantir yes okay? so set set that whole thing up show how he was repenting to the old ways, show the consequences, show the consequences to Muriel. But because of intersectional feminism, they couldn't show any of that. They needed to show, I'm just going to straight up say it, a woman of color in charge in Tolkien. That was their only goal. You could have done that in a million different ways, but no, they wanted to do it with Numenor, specifically with Numenor. That is politics. That's a political decision. It's not a creative decision. And that's why it sucks. So you don't really help anybody. You're trying to be progressive and say diversity is our strength. Well, you put this really diverse cast in a piece of shit. Well done. It's impressive how fucking bad this is. Yeah, I'm still... I even put in my notes, girl Sildur told him to do this. Told yes. Kevin to do this. <laughs> yeah. And she uh, she swayed him by uh, faking that uh, she liked him. Yeah. Girls never do that. No. Okay. Uh, Shouldn't she be at um, crafting school or whatever? She should be at uh, Numenorean trade school. So, so, so Farazon, though, Farazon says something which is perfectly fine. And then the sun, when, when Farazon goes or when this goes onto the sun's face, he looks as if his father's just said the most horrific thing ever. Yeah, I didn't know how to read that. Because. And it was like, but. You know, you're meant to be. Because I'm really confused now about what this guy, who this guy's actually he's meant to. He's a spoiled kid. So because if he was against the people, you know, oh, they took their jobs. The now fair, the night fairs are taking their jobs. And he was against that, and his father came and quelled the crowd with, uh, I've got the best wine, the, the, the greatest wine, uh, and all that. Then you would have thought that he was on the side of uh, 
tolerance. And his father's saying, we go, we go across, we fight, we put the king back on the throne. Then the elf is going to owe us, the king's going to owe us, and we're going to set up trade routes, and we're going to benefit it as a nation. Yeah. And the kid's like, ah! Yeah, it's like, wait a minute. I thought this was a trust fund kid who didn't give a fuck about anything. So all of a sudden, he's like super anti-elf, but he's a trust fund kid who doesn't care about anything. So yeah, I, I, I was completely confused about that, and that's why it was more confusing in the scene later when he showed up to, to burn the ships. To burn right? the ships? What? And then the stowaway, and of course, the sealed stowaway gave me... You know, was very subtle by coughing while he knew somebody was there. And 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 Tolkien fans, they gave the burning of the ships to the Numenorians. That so, uh, <laughs> in a way, in a way. Uh, Do you know right, whose so, fault this next scene is? By the way, um, uh, uh, it's a female Ganda, uh, female Frodo's fault. It's her own yeah. damn fault for being a fucking moron. Yeah, Nori Brandycon. She it's her fault. So Brandy Gan Snatch, sorry. Uh, not Gandalf, totally, totally, definitely Gandalf, is um, is healing his arm, and it's creating ice, and she's looking at it, and then it's like, oh, yeah, that looks like it's freezing. I'm going to totally touch it now. Yeah, and it's spreading on your arm, so I'm just going to grab it. And he's in, like, a trance, and he basically hurts her. She does, and, and then she runs away. Mm. Why? I thought she was the rascally little, rascally little female Frodo. Because they have to keep uh, Isadar Sauron, is Gandalf Sauron, yeah, is Halbrand Sauron. They they need is Theo Sauron. They need to have the mystery box reveal for later. So they got all these uh, all these little mysteries. Oh my god! So the flame. I'm wondering if the flame around not Gandalf is supposed to be the flame of Odin. So you know that's a wielder of the flame of Odin. You know. Uh, so I'm wondering if that's that's it. That's why I think. I, why wouldn't it be Gandalf? If they can get away with putting Gandalf in it, they're going to do it. These are repurposing hacks. Hacks. Could things change between season one, and season two? God, you would hope so. You would oh, hope that that, but that needs a, a whole dude. That needs an idea ideology adjustment, and they're oh, never going to do that. And what did I put my notes right after that? Right, right, mystery box. Right after this, I'm like mystery box. Fuck, yeah, mystery box shit. Um, and I'm glad so many. I, I'm very happy. A lot of people know what that is now. Uh and and have taken the time to go see the jar jar abrams video and understand like what kind of storytelling this is and where it came from it's a gimmick it's an mm -hmm. absolute gimmick uh one that fails all the time and actually destroys everything like it touches they did it with star trek they did it with star wars what do you think rise of skywalker was it's all mystery box uh i, don't know, I, I didn't watch it gary oh, you didn't watch it it's all mystery. never watched it Mystery boxes and MacGuffins. And what's our MacGuffin in this? The sword. The sword. sword. Because the sword. Uh, no, man, that's going to be for next week. So we finally have that dinner scene that we've seen in all the trailers. And it lasted uh, about about a minute. About two minutes. Between Durin. Uh, and... Go on. Durin says something quite poignant in this in this scene where he talks about the wood. And I know where this has come from. And oh, I know the, the history yeah, of this. The table, and, the table, and, yeah. Yeah, the table. And you don't know... Wait, stone, sorry. You don't know about what type of stone this is. You just have it. You just made it into a table, but this is the stone that houses our honored dead. And you took it. And I was just like, okay, that, that's quite poignant, because I, I quite like Durin as a as a... I mean, I quite like him. He looks like a dwarf, you know. He acts and looks like a dwarf. He's the only guy who's he, trying. <clears throat> he fits. He fits in this world that nobody else fits in. Yeah. So he sees this this quite poignant thing because there's a lot of, you know, oh, we're working together, but there's no trust. There's no trust between any of them. 
everyone's fucking lying to each other because of yeah and like how, how does as somebody not not familiar with Gilgalad, mm -hmm. how does it come off to you he's a dick it's a dick thanks amazon the guy that dies fighting sauron alongside ellendale uh, uh -huh. it's just a dick. A beautiful it's just a dick about him. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, you know, so he says this very poignant thing about the stone and and the the um and the table. And Gilgalad says, We'll we will return this we'll to return you. It. And then when they're returning it to him, he just says, Ellen uh Femron just says, You made it all up, didn't you? And he's like, I need a new fire table back in my house. For this. And it's just like oh. Well, the way she eats, I mean she doesn't need a table that big. Well, but, that's a fair um, point. But it's just like you you that was actually quite a poignant thing because you as a small dwarf who's basically just thought of by Gil this Gilgalad anyway, as a tool to, to purpose their towers, you one upped him and you showed your, your strength not just in building but in orating. And and you you just pass it all off as a joke, and Gilgalad's looking over them while they're talking. Yeah, and and this whole scene, you thought there would be like a, a nice long scene here where they're actually setting something up, trying to figure each other out, and it's just basically that story about the table. Gilgalad says you can have it back. Then he goes, there's still honor among the elves. And then Celebrimbor, friend of dwarves, goes, oh God, he... we now have a friendship. The end. That's the, the end, end of the scene. But but Gilgalad's going to stay and get drunk. Because we want we want drunk Gilgalad. Uh, just going to fill my water bottle. Be happy. Go for it. I'm going to. So, yeah, there's a scene between uh, Elrond, the herald of Gilgalad, gets insolent. And basically, they're all trying. They're they're supposedly keeping secrets from her, from each other. Her, <laughs> her. <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. Um, because Elrond knows about the Mithril. Gilgalad sent Elrond to get the Mithril, but uh, Elrond didn't know that he was sent there about the Mithril. Then he finds out. He feels a little mad, and they tell a little story. They tell a little story. Uh, about an elven warrior with the power of Manway who poured all of his light into the tree to protect it uh, while fighting a Balrog. A Balrog. Hang on. There it is. Is that it? I got to go back just a little bit. Here we go. Uh, on one side fought an elven warrior uh, with his heart as pure as Manway who poured all of his light into the tree to protect it. On the other side, a Balrog of Morgoth. There's your, there's your Balrog. There you go. And all the stands squee. This is like a poorly animated segment. It looks like a video game. So all the lightning goes into the tree. And the tree feeds the rock. And that makes... The Mithril? A power is pure and a light is good. So, basically, they want to use the Mithril like the Cimarils. The light of the Eldar. The light of the Eldar is supposedly fading because a tree looks like it has cancer. So that's why they need to do this. The fate of the world is at stake. And that's where we get that line. It's not just our peoples who are in danger. It's all peoples. Peoples. And he says it just like this. Peoples. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stream's what? been banned. Oh, it has? Stream unavailable. Stream suspended for policy violation. Uh-oh. I still Did got people show there. too much? Maybe. If I stop, maybe you flick too hard. Oh, damn it. Wait, 
I got a clip for that. You got too hard, damn it! <laughs> you know when you've been bezoed. Yeah, we lost like 200. I wonder uh -huh. if it'll stop. Hang on. Do, 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 I pushed it too far. No, it's fine. No it's, email? It's, any email? Uh, it says it's uh, monetized right now. It doesn't say it's blocked. I'm going to refresh. So why has it been suspended for policy violation? Uh, refresh it here. How are we doing out there? You good? We go. Oh, we lost a bunch of people. Yeah, that's weird. It's. I'm still. I'm still saying it's not there. Hang on. Oh, yeah, mine's gone. Uh, here. Hang in there. Don't wander and get lost. <laughs> we'll be back in a sec. It's still saying it. I'm gonna stay on until like it happens. I, I'm not seeing anything on my end though. It says it's public. It's on. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. I bet it was good. We're back. We're back. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're back, we're back, baby. We back. I bet it was good. We're back. We're back. All right. I we're guess I, should, I shouldn't put it on that long. <laughs> I shouldn't have got my dick out. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I guess you just missed it. I guess you missed it. I guess I wish, you I'd, I, w I wish I'd missed this fucking show. I do too. So um, I, I just explained like where the mithril came comes from. <clears throat> um, uh, my favorite <clears throat> part is like he's telling Gilgalad is telling Elrond like half the story, and then he stops in the middle, folks, and then he walks over to the tree to show him the tree. But it just it felt so weird that they stopped and then they walk over to the tree, and it's like nobody's walked by like. There's no nothing keeping anybody from walking up to this cancerous looking tree. <laughs> I know because they walked down there when Galadriel came. The other, hey Gil, this tree's looking a bit minging, mate. Don't worry about it. Ah, it's a bummer. We lost a thousand people. No, we still got fifty four hundred. Thank you, thank you. Uh. But we're back. So how? Did, what did you do to bring us back? Did it just come back? No. What? What? The, if you if the, they get a little mad if you're if you're sharing it too long, and they they block you for a minute. But if you take it off, they'll be fine. Um, this might get hit afterwards, but then I can fight this completely and win because you know, fair we're, use. We're talking over this shit. Yeah. We're talking over this shit. People do it all the time. I came black. Hey, I'm rooting for the blacks in uh, House of the Dragon because it's going to be the blacks versus the greens. So oh, I'm, I'm rooting sure. for the blacks. I was getting really awkward for a second. Wasn't it though? <laughs> Wasn't it though? All right. So uh, Elrond has to break his oath to Durin, basically, to save his But he is breaking his oath before he breaks his oath. Do but you he, know anything of do you know if they've got in me through? I cannot break my oath. Basically saying, yes, they do. Yes. But Gilgal I so can't tell you. Stupid, he doesn't pick up on it. <laughs> so he breaks his oath and he's like, My word is my blah blah blah, my my bond and everything. Uh we get back to that in a second. Then it's uh party time in in Numenor. Uh there's a lot of dancing. A Sildor wants to get on the ship. Uh, his friends won't get him on the ship. He wants to apologize. He doesn't. He says his friend can hit him twice. He does. And then he Dude. says, I'm still not going to get you on the ship. None of this. None of this. In Oh, by the way, it's the same alleyway that they had the fight in the previous yeah. episode. Yeah. Uh, but none of this, from the acting to the script to anything, nothing feels remotely genuine. It feels like a stage play. Badly acted stage play. It, it just didn't, I, I I just, half of these, well, not even half, probably three quarters of these actors, they're so wooden. 
I don't believe you're a real character. I don't I don't care about you because of it. There's no investment in any of these. The words that you're saying are stupid. You're not having a proper conversation. The dialogue isn't isn't real. It, no, it's, uh, it's so badly written, this show. It really is. I can't, yeah, so how am I meant to invest in any of it? I don't... Right now, Gary, if everybody died, I couldn't give a shit. Maybe during, I'd be like, aw. Maybe during, I would be, I'd be like, aw. But everyone else, I don't care. Nobody's done anything to make me care about them. It's just fake conflict after fake conflict after fake conflict. Boom, shakalaka. Yeah. So, Kemen, uh, Karl Marx, Fares on Sun, decides to door. came in the back door and blew up the ship, but he found a seal door stowing away in one of the five ships. Let's make this very clear. Yeah. There was 500 Numenorean soldiers, 100 per ship. There were clearly five ships. Okay. Mm. Well, that's what they say. Kevin's going to blow it up. Asildur says, don't you do it. Give me that lantern. They fight, and they end up blowing it up anyway. But Asildur mm -hmm. saves Kevin. Um, he doesn't rat him out. Kevin doesn't rat him out. And uh, and and Elendil doesn't bother to ask what his son was doing uh, on the blown up what ship. Kevin was Kevin was doing in a fishing boat. Or what Kevin was doing in a fishing boat. And they just go, totally cool. Son, now you're allowed to come. Uh, on the three ships they have left yes <laughs> on the three ships after the five ships that they had had one of them blow up you can now come on the three remaining oh my god can you can i'm gonna right i'm gonna look from my perspective i'm gonna see that when it blows up if it took out another ship but i didn't see it take out another ship So here we go. Here they are. They're, they're panicking. He looks back at uh, Kevin through the back window. One ship explodes. Yeah, one ship explodes. One ship explodes. They're all running to the, the dock. And... Wait, 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 wait. Is that a... I, maybe a second ship behind explodes, but it's so badly... Wait, no, because that, right. Well, it must have, because they only have three ships left. <laughs> well, something happened to the f another ship. So the ship in front is on fire. Okay, all right, all right. What I think has happened is one ship's exploded, and then the fire has moved to a second ship, and the second ship's exploded. But the second ship has exploded, I think, but the angle is showing the first ship in front of it, so you can't really tell if a second ship explodes or if it's the first ship exploding still. By the oh, way, yeah. these ships are really easy to explode. Because uh, the second ship that exploded didn't have any oil on it. No, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't have any oil on the deck. To I think that's what's happened. I think a second ship has exploded behind, maybe, but that is really, yes. Yeah, there's a second ship behind the first ship on fire. That is really badly, uh, that is really badly displayed. If I share my screen. Yeah, hey, let's share somebody else's screen. If I share yeah, this. I'll get in less trouble. Yeah, yeah. I'll get in trouble now. Um, what I think is the, this is the first ship. Okay. And then this is a ship behind that's on fire and exploded. Oh, it's like building seven. But, but the ship, the first ship is so big and on fire that it's really difficult to see this tiny ship at the back that's exploding. Why didn't they just do the aerial shot then to show the second ship getting engulfed and exploding 
I don't know. I'm go I'm so used to having everything like painfully explained to me. <laughs> like when something else happens, it's so strange. Uh so two ships are gone. Two ships are gone. And now they need to rethink everything. Uh now they're like, mm, we should rethink this until we get more people on board. Although earlier in the episode, Alindil said, we have more than enough volunteers. <laughs> Why does Numenor only have five fucking ships? Why do they're only sending five ships? Okay. Uh, I don't know how 500 men are going to fight off the forces of, of Sauron and the orcs and free the, the South, but uh, uh, I'm sorry, right. men and women. Imagine Minas Tirith, okay? Yeah. Imagine the orcs outside of there. How many Rohim, <laughs> Ro, Rohim, 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 how Rohim. many came in through the flank? Oh, on the side. Oh, uh, yeah. in in uh, the be oh shit, wasn't it two to three thousand? Easily, yeah. They said mm -hmm. they had three thousand men, and they they can scramble. Correct me if I'm wrong, chat. They said three thousand, then they could scramble some more people, get some more people from the hills and uh, the. Oh, I forgot what they said. I know, I know most of that movie by heart. But yeah, it's about three thousand people. 3, so 000. if if Sauron is regrouping in the Southlands, six thousand. They're saying six thousand. Six six thousand. Okay, 6, thank 000. you. Thank you. Thank you. So what the fuck are five hundred people? Some of them made up by volunteers from last week. Who's gonna come? And everyone went to see Kale. What is, is the, do like a thousand people live on Numenor? <laughs> I don't know. That's like in this show, in this show. So they get there, right? And they've got like fucking 6,000 orcs or something out front. Or 6,000 Rohirrim. Just come. Oh God. Fuck this show. Um, next scene, Celebrimbor rats out Gilgalad to Elrond saying, yeah, I totally knew. I sent you in there. I'm sorry. Then he gives him a, uh, gives him a little pep talk about his dad, uh, Aaron Dill. And, um, yeah, I think I, I went for a piss at this point. I was yeah, and it was like, it was like a nothing scene. Uh, but he basically says that we are trying to reproduce. We want to bathe. We want to bathe the elves in the light of the Eldar through the mithril. What are they going to all like put on meth? Like what the, what? Okay. So but, that's what right. they want to do. But he said, he shows in the, the piece of Mithril that, that uh, Durin gave him. And he said, we haven't been able to extract the light. Correct? Mm -hmm. He then follows that up by saying, but if we get tons of Mithril, then we'll totally be able to do it. Based off what? Yeah, you've just been able, unable to extract the light from a t a, a tiny piece of mithril, and then your follow up is, but if we get tons of mithril, then we'll totes be able to do it. Uh, my sources trust me, bro. Yeah, it makes no sense. No sense in the lore or in this story, but most of most of all in in the show itself, because that's what we got to judge it on. So Elrond is still like worried about his oath. Oh my God, like my toe, my oath, dude. Uh, and then he's like, I'm sorry. Can we have sex now? Um, and then we're back to. Uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. But he's, he's, he gave the oath to Durin, but he's, he's showing Celebrimbor the Mithril. Celebrimbor knows what he sent him for. He didn't say, Elrond didn't say anything to him about the Mithril, but he's saying like, I sent you for the Mithril. Okay. And he didn't know. Okay. Dude, like this, we're five episodes in, and I know. that's all we know. So Sauron basically an said, hour and a half, an hour and a half, and and we could have. This is one fucking film, and not even the extended cut. It could be no. boiled down to, and no. it's not even good. So we got Gal Galadriel and Halbrand, and like it's so obvious he's Sauron because she's like, you know, I, I what you've been through, and and he basically says you don't know what I did to survive. And once mm. people find out, they'll reject me. You'll reject me. Um, my people reject me. Everyone my people, will reject me. everybody will reject me. And when the uh, yeah, and when these people discover it, they will cast me out. 
Um, and then he goes, all of a sudden he's like, I'm sorry about your brother. She, uh, you know, he, he b- talks about what she's lost and, and he goes, why do you keep fighting? Why are you so awesome? Galadriel. <laughs> Gal- and she's, I, I keep fighting because I can't stop because I'm Galadriel, the girl Barian, scourge of the orcs, warrior of the wastelands, a commander of the Northern armies. <laughs> 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 um, and then from the house of light, uh, does it mention Kelly? Kellaborn at all her husband she mentioned I, one brother oh, yeah i know no we're gonna have to wait till episode seven for that. gotta wait for, so she's talking about all her loss this entire series and she d- hasn't brought up Kellaborn. now i am absolutely convinced they weren't going to bring him up at all and it might have been a reshoot because i'll just say there's a certain youtuber out there who was talking about it for about two years like where's Kellaborn? who's playing Kellaborn? Mm. i don't see anybody cast as Kellaborn. Who's Caliborn? Where's Caliborn? I bet you they're not going to have Caliborn because they're going to have this strong female lead. And we've seen in previous productions that having a man there would, 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 she wouldn't have, Mm -hmm. would diminish her agency. Uh, We're seeing this in, I don't care about Little Mermaid, but she's not, it's not going to be about her boyfriend. Same thing with Snow Snow White. It's not going to be about the dude. Um, No, she's what? She's going to go to the surface for what? So I Just think shopping. It, I think they put it in later uh, for the fact that it's in the seventh episode and they're talking about all her losses and she doesn't bring it up fucking once makes no fucking sense. But what really doesn't make sense is Sauron all of a sudden looks sad and goes, I'm really sorry about your brother. Like he was absolutely responsible for killing him. And she's all, what did she say? Your sorrow won't ease my pain. I'm like, what? A <laughs> it's, it's victim porn. It's, like, it's victim like porn. absolutely nice to her. And she goes, Your sorrow won't ease my pain. I'm like, what a bitch. Galadriel the guns. Why did he save her in the in the second episode? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. None of this makes sense. Uh, we got a, a hundred and ninety nine ninety nine dollar super chat. Holy shit! We're not be silent. Prepare for battle. Yes. Uh, nice number there, forty two. It's the answer. Thank you, Wyatt Fry. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll get to the super chat in just a moment. We're almost done. So, it's basically. Fight with me. No, I don't want to fight because, like, I'm totally misunderstood, Aragorn. Of the South. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, no, I'm totally understood because I'm Galadriel, the girl. I'm, I'm more misunderstood than you are. I'm more misunderstood than you are. Um, and then we got Adar. We have another opportunity to find out who Adar is. So the townspeople who... who are we, though? <laughs> no. The, the answer is no. The townspeople who surrender kneel to Adar and then the toxic white male who goes, if you heard of Sauron, he calls him Sauron. Adar gets mad, throttles him, hands him a knife, and tells him to kill Enselnor. He's all, you can only be bonded by blood. And by then blood. he walks up to kill him, and they cut away. That's it. We get no explanation yet of who Adar is. By the way, just an elf. Just an elf. He is making orcs, though. He's making orcs. Like Morgoth did. How can an elf do this? I really don't effing know. Oh, I do. How? Tell me. Because you have not seen what I have seen. Oh. (laughs) Not yet, anyway. You have not seen what Ada has seen. Trust me, bro. (sighs) Um, then we see, but when we see the orcs march onto the tower, where are the humans? They weren't there. The orcs marching. So what did they do with the humans? I think they just left them behind. Oh, that's Joseph what? Malway. Just, just oh, my to... God. Hmm? That's Joseph Malway. That's Adar. I forgot. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Good actor. Benjamin Stark. Yep. Very good actor. Completely wasted on this. Probably should have played Sauron. Probably absolutely should have played Sauron. But he's not as hot as Halbrand. He's not. 
All right. So I just told you all that. And then we're back to Bronwyn and, 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 um, uh, Don Lemonless is, tra is training his son because <laughs> it's his son, right? It's totally is his son. <laughs> He's totally training his son. And, um, they're getting ready for it's, it's supposed to be like Helm's deep. Remember Helm's deep from Lord of the Rings. We want to make you think of Helm's deep, except with like a lot fewer people and one elf, but you can see the orcs torches. Like they're really close and they're all, how far is it away? Days. I'm on like, days. Looks like they're going to be there in 20 minutes. They're not that far away. Well, this is right. This is the whole weird thing. The village people <laughs> left this episode to go and give themselves up to the orcs and Adar, which they did. And we saw now the orcs are going to march onto the tower, which will take, I would say, Gary, the approximate same time. Give or take 20 minutes or so. The Numenorians are going to arrive just as they start attacking the tower. And they've got to sail all the way from Numenor to Middle fucking Earth. Yeah. Pfft. What is going on with the time in this show? I just don't fucking know. So the sword <sighs> hilt that, that Theo had, he had a nice little talk with his dad, uh, Don Lemonless, and he just showed it to him. And then like, immediately... <laughs> So as he shows him the sword hill, he's all, I've seen this before. He walks about five feet, moves some brush, and sees it right there. Boom. <laughs> oh, it's right here. It's like right fucking right there. Right here. Isn't that, what, isn't that convenient? How convenient is that? Oh, my God. It's, they're so, not even trying. They're not even fucking trying. And they're trying to absolve, like, this is part of the dark it's magic. It's a watchtower! It's a watchtower. This is part of the Why dark magic. Why has it got magic. the story of fucking Sauron in there on it? Um, and it's, it's supposed to, that sword is supposed to be something that enslaves the Southern people to relieve them of responsibility of siding with, with Morgoth. And and Sauron, I, I I don't fucking know. So uh, Bronwyn's gonna give up. She's like, I'm gonna give up. I'm yeah. gonna give up. And then she says in a conversation, "Wow, we'd have to bring this tower down on top of them." They go, "Wait a minute, that's a great idea. That's how we could win. We'll knock the tower down." Hi, how you have fifty fucking people? How are you gonna knock a fucking tower down? Doesn't matter. And then um, later on, it shows it shows like all the orcs coming. And uh, I don't know if I can find the picture, but it, they're not that fucking far away, right? They're like really close. And she asked, how long until they get here? And he's all, days. I'm like, it's like five minutes. You left, <laughs> the villagers left and went. Well, we were going downhill, not uphill. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? The show's going downhill. We're on the downhill run with the show. It started downhill. It started downhill. We're and digging it's for me through now, dude. Uh, and they're gonna go attack the tower. And this is this is oh, this has got the best picture. So I've got the picture for this. Hang on. So this is where Durin tells Elrond, yeah, I totally lied about the table. And then Elrond says, Hey, I'm gonna break my oath, but here's why. The entire world depends on you. And Durin makes him say, like, and it's pretty heavy. It's like the future of the entire Middle Earth relies on Durin. And he wants to hear him repeat it a couple times. He's like, the elves' lives are in your hands. He's all, say it one more time. It feels good. And then he says it one more time. He's all, good. Now we got to go convince my dad. Um, mm. And Elrond's all, well, I'm going to tell Disa the table was from me. Ha, ha, ha. And Gil Galad's like watching him. And, and then, then, right, there was one, ah, there was oh, one thing I picked up on he, here. So, okay, go on, and then we'll get when to it, the, when, when Femron was talking to him, Juren says, is it the weight of the table that uh, weighs on you? And, and Femron says, it is not the weight of the table. And I'm like, yeah, it isn't the weight of the table, because you're not fucking carrying it. There's a bunch of other elves that are carrying it. You're just fucking walking behind. So when Elrond... Is having when Elrond is having trouble telling him that he's going to break his oath, 
Um, Duran says this. Oh, no. No. Quit fucking around. Give me the meat and give it to me raw. <laughs> give me the meat and give it to me raw. <laughs> I'm not looking at his face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I got, yeah, I got news. <laughs> oh, no. That's a line. That's an actual line. That's an actual line from the show. <laughs> Wait. You know, I, when you said to me, yeah. the context of these two guys' relationships is definitely more than just friendship. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. And then you got a line like that. I'm like, yeah, okay, you're right. It's like the like spurn. He was like a spurned lover. Now, you... <sighs> give me the meat and give it to me raw. It's mm. big gay. It is. And uh, speaking of which, it took me a minute to to get it up from Stephen Voiceover, who's brilliant. <laughs> I am, I am not gay. gay. I, have I have relationships, relationships with, with women. women. Sex, Sex with men. And I got, I got news, news for you. I'm not gay. The look on his face then is. <laughs> it goes a little longer, but yeah. <laughs> That's, I gotta, gotta cut it out. I've been pushing it too hard. Uh, you flick too hard. Oh, uh, damn it. I flick too hard, damn it. <laughs> Uh, Arby's, give me that. <sighs> Says Monsieur, uh, human Kirk, Gary Naz, definitely more than just <laughs> friendship. Hey, give me the meat, Gary, and give it to me raw. I am not gay, I have relationships with women, sex with men, and I got news for you. Ah, oh, it's too early in the morning to dance. Oh, right. hey, get, we got one more scene that's really fucking long, and it's a bunch of people getting on ships. <laughs> that's it. Because big surprise, Hal Brand decides to go with them to war. By the way, they're all wearing the fake scale mail. Yeah, it's really bad. So there, there's a. Where is it? Oh, I got to share it first. There's not Aragorn. Yes. <laughs> but you got to see Elendil's fucking helmet, dude. If I can <laughs> with, the red, I with the red wings. It's like, what the fuck? What even is that? Look at all the scale, fake scale mail on. How come, like, is this thing a little behind there? You can see it there. Yeah. Right? yeah. It looks so cheap when they went down the whole alleyway, though. It was weird. Transformative. Robots Transformative. in disguise. Robots in disguise. When the what? Fuck you... I, come, I can't get to that fucking clip. Fuck. <laughs> Take me there. Take me there. Take me down to Numenor City where the girls Grass are green and the grass is pretty. There it is. There you go. <laughs> oh, look at that. What helmet. is that? What is that? <laughs> oh, my God. Does that look nautical to you? It looks retardical. That's what it looks. <laughs> it's fucking horrible. And and then later on. Oh, wait. You that's right. Like, nobody has their freaking helmets on. Like. Right. They're all crooked. They look terrible. Look at that. What the fuck? But then the big moment is when God oh. shows up, man. Here she comes. And we're all meant to be just like oh. amazed by her beauty oh. and her, her armor. And she 
it's just the a cow. It's just a cow. It's just a the cow. End. The end. The end. Oh, I'd just be like, God, she's on my shit. Oh, can I go on the other one? Fuck <laughs> this. She's just gonna be bitching all the way. Five episodes. There isn't, and like I said, they, they could have, they could have made this much more succinct with a much better script. And this is all an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah, this is an hour and ten minutes. And it felt like five. No, I mean the whole five hours you can oh, condense yeah, yeah, the whole thing, like yeah, totally. an hour and a half. I totally agree. Uh, Byron for fifty dollars. Thank you very much. It says enjoyable series if you ignore the original content, entertaining at parts. But lower concerned Tolkien fans will be disappointed. Beautiful and visually stunning, but painfully mediocre. The plot holes are power. Uh, there are uh, there are from three. Uh, these are from three star reviews from Amazon. That's a three star review from Amazon because they deleted five thousand one star reviews today. Oh, I need to. Um, I need to check something. Go ahead. Uh, James Fowler for $5 is yeah, donation yeah. side. Hey man, thanks for the heads up on the Hobbit fan cut. It's damn good. Been watching us since 2014. Damn. Uh, thanks, James Fowler. Uh, anyways, Elf, Kami, Petalwood, FJB just read my Tolkien books instead of that uh, diarrhea. Oh yeah, love you guys. So, oh, love you so much. <laughs> Dark Warlord for $10 says, just got out of work and wanted to say oh hi. dude what there is a big continuity mistake what's that galadriel left her armor on the ship when she was stripped before she went into falinor yeah where'd she get that armor from so where'd she get her elven armor back from yeah what, now what? before anyone says well they forged her a new set no 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 because that is that is us or you, but I think it's a different. I think it's a slightly different armor set. I think because this one, yeah, the armor. Okay, yeah, all right. The armor that she's wearing on the ship doesn't have the Captain Marvel star. No, uh, but she didn't have any armor with her when she was on the fucking raft. No. So we've got to we've got to make the exact story up same again. armor. It's similar. It's not exact. Um, from, okay, is it? So the Numenorians made that for. Basically. Well, that I mean, we we're creating our own canon. Yeah. Well, because no, the ship, the, 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 the uh, not the supposed to be on Numenor. She doesn't know Muriel. She doesn't know Elendil. She doesn't know Isildur. She doesn't go into battle. She doesn't train Numenorians. None of this shit happens. Ah, uh, this is no. This is uh, the armor is different. So she's so that's the, that's the armor we've been seeing in all the trailers and stuff. That's yeah. when she does in fights and stuff. Okay, uh, just got out of work and wanted to say hi. Uh, thank you guys for covering the rangs of power. I couldn't last fifteen minutes because Guy Ladriel was such an insufferable biatch. Uh, much love and see you all F and T later today. Yeah, that's uh about tw- thirteen hours from now. Matthew N for ten dollars. It's been a delight watching you lads and the rest of the crew ride rings of power into the ground. Really enjoyed Shad and Disbrew being on the show. Keep fighting the good fight and tell it like it is. Thank you, Matthew N for ten dollars. And guess what? Um, Mahler is on tomorrow. Disbrew is on tomorrow, and I wouldn't be surprised if Shad snuck in too. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? I know what you mean. Papa oh. Smurf. Papa Smurf. All right, we're going to try to get to as many as possible, but it's getting late. Sun's going down, big guy. Sun's come up. Sun's go- <laughs> it, it has. <laughs> oh, take yeah, a it's a beautiful sunshine outside. You better take a nappy wappy. I'm going to say, don't worry, I'll, I'll take a nap. Ian Peter Davison for 100 Australian dollars at our Gary and chat. I just bought a seventh doctor figure from the character options autographed by the seventh doctor, Sylvester McCoy. That is fucking right. awesome. That is awesome. Also, would you please give a shout out to Aaron, who does a podcast, Sci-Fi Zone. So it's Aaron. It's called the Sci-Fi Zone. Thumbnail has a red Z uh, who sold me the Sylvester McCoy. 
there you go. Aaron on the Sci-Fi Zone. Check it out. Uh, I'm going to assume it's like Audible, Spotify, or iTunes. I thought I had thought the super fans who saw episodes one and two talked about wanting to fix bad boy Sauron, but sexy Sauron isn't revealed yet, let alone uh, those two episodes. Either they were told he was, uh, or gasp, they were lying, says Corin Timigan for 20 Australian dollars. Lots of Aussies, Aussies representing. Uh, they were lying. It was script. Well, they were reading a script, right? As they took multiple takes. That yeah, because there was a, a part which didn't marry up. When he says, "I'm gonna, I, I'll you know, I'll fix him," in the when they're showing like coming up sort of thing, but when it was actually in the interview, he says, "I'm fix him on the other side," and he doesn't quite say exactly what he said. So that meant there was definitely multiple takes. Yep, multiple takes of their opinion. Remember when a guy was pissing. <laughs> <laughs> off of the side <laughs> oh jay, jay longbow got that oh that was so fucking funny but you know what's even better what's that this is the uh yeah. this is the advert this is the poster advertising superman coming into uh the wonder uh supergirl show superman is coming in supergirl <laughs> <laughs> Well, they are only cousins. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, maybe maybe it's a little maybe it's a little Westeros on Krypton. You know, well, they are the last two remaining. So you know. Oh my God! I need. We're gonna have some poster. funky kids, but I need uh... that poster on my wall now. <laughs> oh, where was I? <laughs> where was I? Um, the show is gut wrenchingly gut wrenchingly frustrating. It's an insult to filmmakers everywhere, and I feel dumber after each episode. I take solace knowing Amazon got caught uh, deleting reviews. Give me the meat. I want it all raw. Durin Elrond says Will M for $20. That is. Oh, holy. No, wait. What? Wait. Uh oh. What? Halbrand agreed to go with them to war, and if Halbrand didn't agree, they would not have gone to war. Correct? Correct. So why's Galadriel got a suit of armor? They made it really fast. They're really, really fast in Numenor. Uh, in dude, a day? So Just like Halbrand got his fucking crest in a day? You watched Star Trek Discovery, did you not? Uh, Some of it. Yeah, you watched some of it. You watched Season... enough of it to know that this is exactly like Star oh, Trek Discovery. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, in exactly, terms of not make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, we don't know what time. We don't know. There's no passage of time. There's no concept of time or space. We distance is just this thing that happens that we don't worry about. No, um, this is this is the fundamental problem with anybody from bad reboot because jar jar abrams is all about cutting corners and he's been very vocal about this this little detail -y stuff remember he didn't like star trek because it was too cerebral too heady it made him think too much get out of the fucking planet mate. and then they gave him the star trek franchise remember so how they... this is a, this is like this is like the third fucking string from Bad Reboot working on this. So he's so if DC or Warner giving him 500 million for nothing. Oh. Um he's incredibly good at bullshit and there's a lot of retarded people in Hollywood with a lot of money. But I mean Zazov's looking for his next person to head up the DC universe. But they gave him 500 million ah. to do that, and he's produced nothing. Exactly. Nerd cookies for $2. I got an answer for you, nerd cookies. She goes, Gary, help me. Why does it hurt so much? Because it isn't real. <laughs> Sorry, little hobbit. Love triangle stuff going on there. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because it isn't real. So it's okay, nerd cookies. It also hurts so much because it's shit. At least Chad Chad Elf sorted her out. 
fucking get in with the program woman you fucking idiot <laughs> <laughs> i know right <laughs> that intro perfect says jonathan phil uh for 20 canadian pesos uh yohai pedro rodriguez for five brazilian pesos hey gary it's getting pretty hard to watch this only your live and a big joint to make me get through it <laughs> and laughs wow. with all reels matrix moves yeah guys I, I can tell so many of you are tuning out and let's do it again in the chat in the chat chat you lovely sexy chat you how many watch the show just an simply answer yes or no be Last honest week? please be honest yeah and be honest you know like there's no way of checking. No, I tr we trust. We trust. I, I trust you. Yeah. My God, I trust you. I don't know about other content creators, but uh, my, you know, Friday Night Tides. But uh, Gold eight one eight for know. five U.S. dollars says, "Does anyone want to explain to me how a half, <laughs> uh, fat half foot exists?" All they do is eat berries and carry their stuff 100, uh, hundreds of miles. Magic calories, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, they're not eating a lot of chocolate or anything. No, she was talking oh, today about peaches and yeah, plums. I mean, sugar. Um, that person says no. Yes. That was a lot of yeses. No. No. Hell no. No, I... I don't have Exuday Girl to uh, to put up my poll. Somebody said that Gladriel's armor was delivered by Next Day Amazon. Prime. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon Prime delivered Gladriel's armor. I would I wouldn't I be fucking surprised if they said an advert in with a guy just going delivery for Gladriel. He's got the fucking Amazon smiley thing on him. <sighs> Oh, shit. That was good. Whoever said that? Jeff's kiss. Well done. Tricky for $50. <laughs> Says 100% unrelated to Rings of Power. Just finished rewatching Primeval New World. So um, canceled after uh, one season in 2013. Such an amazing cliffhanger in the final episode. Give me all the canceled too soon series over Rings of Prime. Hail to the fellowship. Uh, Tricky, I remember Primeval. <laughs> Hmm. I think I watched it. Yeah, I remember seeing scenes for it like during Doctor Who because it was like like it was on during the year of the 50th anniversary, which is 2013. Is it is Primeval the one that had uh Hannah from S Club 7 in it? I think so. Uh watch Primal instead. I think it's called something else over in Europe. I don't think it's called Primal. Uh called something else uh randy for rose for ten dollars the show was so doomed to fail amazon didn't even have the rights to the silmarillion oh, i read this one uh they're trying to make a story out of the appendices last month fucking ass off uh <laughs> meth run deer <laughs> says dan brockman for two dollars meth run deer <laughs> oh that's good uh thank you for the 49 mexican pesos uh Oh my God, how am I supposed to say your name? Hueganiel? Hueganiel? Did I get that right? Uh, off Brandolph. How about Off Brandolph? Enjoy these uh, autopsies. Hail, lads, from Boris McQueen for five New Zealand dollars. Hey, there's your, one of your countrymen out there, as. Big ups. Big ups to the NZ. <laughs> I don't Sorry, know. I just, I, just, I just think. I am just absolutely bamboozled that we are five hours in and fuck all has happened. Dude. And I know you're not watching House of the Dragon, but like it just five episodes felt like an entire season. It did. Mm. Like it was long enough to where you could start like giving a shit about a couple of characters who are going to be leaving because the, the actors, there's an age the yeah, yeah. two actors so you're actually going mm, man i wonder if the show survives because the other two the younger ones were really good uh as she has plot armor says eric k for two dollars oh uh, red bull gives his helmet wings says eric k for two dollars <laughs> it's a red bull helmet <laughs> oh you're right continuity is a spectrum mst3k 
says Monsieur Price. It certainly is. It's on the spectrum in this show. Uh, it's been a delight. Well, I read that one. All right. I can read a few more and then we got to go. And I'll get it on a uh, square up. I got to square up the last two eps. That was not the last step. It's the last step. Just this one. Uh, you shall not copyright strike, says Monsieur Price. They didn't. I might get hit later, though. They have to be careful. I understand. I mean, it's you know, other streamers can get away with it. I'm no Dr. Disrespect. Much respect to Dr. Disrespect, though. Uh, shouldn't not Gandalf actually be Saruman? Uh, no, nobody. No, Saruman, Gandalf, they shouldn't have been. It sh for one, he shouldn't be called Gandalf. It's Olorin. Um, Gandalf comes much later. Uh, the backlash on Rings of Power is more entertaining to watch than the actual show. You're right, Daniel J. Lanou. Thank you for the five dollars. Uh, watching Gary lose his mind over Rings of Powers is way more entertaining than anything Hollywood could write. This is why I spend my views here. Thank you. Uh, that tricky dude for five Canadian pesos. Uh, why not stick to Numenorean story and create a fake POC queen in a land not no one cares about? Now we all get called racist for their racist characters. Yep, and their racist move. Uh, her dad is very white. Yeah, she doesn't look anything like her fucking dad. That must be an adopted dad. Or, but they put we don't see mummy. Palantir's mom got with the Numenorean pool boy. I don't know. Uh, girl Sildur's inclusion in this robs it of a fantastic relationship that could have been between the brothers of Sildur. Uh, Anarion, uh, you know, the two halves of the Argonoth, exactly kings of Arnor and Gondor. Yeah, no, we we needed female energy, we needed female fucking energy. Uh, Max Hope, thank you for two euros. Ring she was, you, well, Ring she, she only existed to tell, uh, in through the back window that uh, he should go talk to his dad. That's all she existed for. Yeah, I mean, she's the, having her in this is read, especially you, you didn't need another female character. You have you like two in charge the whole time. So that maybe like when Guy Ladriel leaves and it's going to be more of the drama on Numenor, but nobody's going to give a shit about the show in two years, two years until season two. And this is the biggest flop of all time. Rings of Power is what happens when bad reboot cancer met, uh, metastasizes. Flag Ninja, you are. A thousand percent correct. At this mm -hmm. point, let Halbrand just stab her. <laughs> let it end, <laughs> says Patrick Banks for five dollars. Yep, Asildur's sister looks like Casey Anthony. Does she? Who's does she? Who's Casey? No, no idea. Uh, I can't wait to see Lofty defend this on Flashcast. Where is Lofty? I don't even know why I'm saying that, but he's been missing. He's been MIA. He's probably writing good reviews. On I think he got AIDS. I don't know. RB four ninety nine. Uh, the C total told me Rings of Power is a steaming pile of crap. The C <laughs> is always right. The C is always right. What a stupid oh, never mind. Fuck that it. Is why stupid. am I even? Why am I? I know. Just why am I even? They can't right. be bothered. Why should I be bothered? Last just three. Think, last three. Let me refresh. Okay. The C is always right. Oh my goodness. I read that one. Dude, I'm hungry. It's like when you stay up this late, you get hungry at two in the morning, which is, ne it's never good to eat at two in the morning, but I'm going to anyway. Well, I'm, I'm going to have some breakfast after this. Then I'm going to do my review. Then I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're almost done. Uh, I hit the gym super late tonight. My wife wakes up in three hours to leave uh, for a week to go oh. to San Francisco. Yeah. And we got Friday Night Tights. Got to talk about this again. Yeah, yeah. Everything about Rings of Power is fake. Super fans are fake. Good reviews are bots. The story is fake. The characters are fake. Bezos is fake. When all the fans want is authenticity. This is the formula for failure. That tricky dude for $10, uh, 10 Canadian pesos. That was brilliant. You're absolutely right. Guy Ladriel is so amazing. She is both the main protagonist and antagonist. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> she's, the, she's the main protagonist who is an antagonist. That man says run, runner. That's good. Fuck Canadians coming in. Uh, hey, uh, nerdy and azzy. Uh, wanted to point out that the video timestamp 1216, there is a horse in the middle left of the screen floating yeah. over the water. Really? No, it's, it's being went, winched onto the, onto the boat. But later, we... It's just the party at night time. So there's this horse just on the fucking boat <laughs> this whole time. And then two boats get blown up. Was the horse on any of those boats? So why are you yeah. winching horses onto boats and then just not giving a fuck? Ah. Who is looking after the boats that are meant to have fucking animals on? I hope None that of those wasn't boats the... can house animals. None of them. Nope. I hope that wasn't the horse that Guy Ladria likes. <laughs> no. I swear to God, if that is Shadow Fat. Shadow Fucks. <laughs> Shadow Fucks. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes lockdown audience score 39%. I think they did, Desert Fox. But it's bad enough. I mean, they locked Doctor Who season 11 at 20. Um, she holds pretty much locked at 39. She holds locked at 30. I think it got to 38%. Probably a mistake. Oh. Probably a mistake. I got a screenshot of that. So. Uh, oh, we'll end it with this one. I B Doey for four ninety nine says, "Ha, Nazani, Nazanin Banyadi has also blocked. I'm also blocked by her on Twitter after I ratioed oh. her on a post calling her out on some feminist screeching. Good for you. I think I think she must have done a blockchain, and I don't know who the the um uh point you know ground zero was on that, but uh, I I think." I got hit with that blockchain. Yeah, I didn't. I can still see her tweets. And that's fine. But, but I'm the only one who can see discussing film and everyone else is blocked. So. <laughs> yeah, I, man, I'm so sorry I'm missing that. Um, Blocking me is, is fine. I don't block or mute anybody. Not a single person. I block sex bots and I mute uh, ankle biters. So they can just like hang out to the into the void. If Sauron's been around Arda for thousands of years and Galadriel is looking for him physically on Arda, why are people talking like he is gonna arrive soon or fall from the sky? He's already around. I know. Sentinel Rex, and we'll end it there. That's where the big problem is, right? But it's, it's the mystery box. It's because of the wizard and the. It's all trying to set up that the wizard Sauron. Yeah, but it's a mystery box we know the answer to. So, so, so what? We'll figure out who fucking Sauron is. But it's still Sauron. And it shouldn't be. It should be Anatar, the Lord of Gifts. That's the next time we should see him. But because Tolkien didn't specifically say something, we can make him uh, anti Aragorn for some weird attempt at messaging. And it's, it's because. Hollywood feels guilty casting white men in anything and any type of masculinity has to be surrounded by balanced by three or four women in power. I don't make these rules. I just point them out. They're fucking ridiculous. They're absolutely mm -hmm. ridiculous. And nobody's asking for all dudes either. But the thing is, it's diminishing the female characters because you're putting the female characters in the male roles. And this whole like, we're disrupting gender norms. I'm not in fucking university. I don't I don't have student fucking debts. I don't want to be in university. Keep it out of my fucking real life. Nobody cares about that shit. And keep it out of my... I won't take the Lord's name in vain because I'm talking about Tolkien. Keep it out of my Tolkien. Keep it out of everybody's Tolkien. All right, so briefly... Uh, we'll see how quick he gets around. The half flips are pretty unwatchable. They are unwatchable. Mm -hmm. Find the errands of the beginning of the elves and then to find out their way under the guidance of God. They invited the elves to cross the rebel amongst them with the wicked. God, no car. Was it all alive? Was it a devastating large part of the way they took them back in the time of the worst? Echo. Oh, and so the whole machine starts. Damn it. Hang on. I still got no down at the bottom. <laughs> no. Oh, do I? <laughs> <It's> <laughs> not his laugh yet. No. Sorry about that. 
So he's talking about the elves and Melkor. Well, they took them back into their paradise to the west to protect them. And so that the whole machinery starts from the, uh, from the re rebellion of the elves and their fall, in rebellion of the, of the evil they did in the bursting out from paradise. So what you've got in, the, in our period is uh, two lots of elves, ones that, uh, that never started, just didn't want to be bothered to be anything higher than they were, were the uh, ordinary uh, woodland elves of the uh, Far East. Those who were starting to go to uh, the divine paradise and never got there, which are the grey elves of, uh, of, uh, of the West, and those who got and came back as exiled. The uh, high elves who sing this uh, the song to Elbereth in the beginning of the Lord of the Rings are, are exiled elves who'd once known what it was to see the Emergic gods in, uh, in person. Now dwarves create a difficulty, don't they, in this particular thing? He gets into dwarves and he basically says, like, they're not attached to anything. Like, at, he said, at the time, I'm still working on them. But what he essentially said is, uh, yeah, there were some elves who uh, lived in the Blessed Lands and saw the light of the Eldar, and there's some that didn't. When does he talk about the um, LGBTQ plus community? Uh, that was right after the dwarves. Oh. He talks about all, uh, all the representation. I'll check that one out later. No. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks, everyone, for watching. There will be a square up for this and uh, the, the, the streams this week, over the weekend. I, I might work on it tomorrow morning if I, if I get up early <laughs> enough because I'm going to be sleeping in. I think tomorrow I think it's the only day I'm gonna have to sleep in. So I might have a might have a completely uh Did vegetable you day right tomorrow. The show? <laughs> mm -hmm. I could just you just get to go to sleep after your your video and I'll just call mm -hmm. you and wake you up for the show. I'll give you a little get a little call. I got my alarm. I got my alarm. Okay. okay. Um I, I utilize those I utilize those Gary. They're quite good. Yeah. We're gonna talk about this She Hulk and Snore or and Boar. Oh, and, uh, do I have to watch episode two and three? Uh, no. I only made Chrissy watch one, so you only have to watch one. I watched all three, and I'm not going to watch them again. Like I'm, I'm out on the show. Like I don't care. I don't care. It's not god awful. My, it's not good. No, it just exists. It's yeah. It's there. It's it's just there, and yeah. You don't want to find out. About the guy in the prequel that got blowed up getting the Death Star plans, what he did before he got blowed up getting the Death Star plans on a prequel to a prequel. So, so like my ranking right now is like number one, House of the Dragon running away, which is a fucking shock and it still can go bad. Um, I would have to say number two would be Andor, which is only there because it's terminally mediocre. <laughs> it's like, it is like if you like a warm glass of water in a beige room, that is Andor. <laughs> that is Andor. <laughs> One of the greatest analogies I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> a room, room temperature glass of water in a beige room. <laughs> yep. Um. Then it's She Hulk, and then it's the Rings of Power. The Rings of Power is the fucking worst. It's worse because it costs a billion dollars. Uh. But she looks pretty fucking awful too. It's the worst thing Disney Plus has produced, without a doubt. This last episode, um, Jen puked at a wedding. Mm -hmm. They had a cringe fight with Titania, and mm -hmm. Mr. Immortal was completely wasted on some douchebag who wanted to get a bunch of divorces. Have you ever are you aware of Silent Hill at all? I am. In uh Silent Hill 2. In the original, because I believe they actually removed it from the game, because well, whatever. In the original, there you, you walk in and you see Pyramid Head. Yep. Uh, pretty much uh, raping a um, fucked up uh, demon something, while the while it's kind of feeding it into the uh, dispo garbage disposal unit. Wow. Holy yeah. crap. Yeah. That's dark. 
it's an interesting it's an interesting image how did we get to there <laughs> uh, i tell you that's how it feels to me watching these fucking shows <laughs> i was like where are we going with this that's what it feels like i feel like i'm the mannequin being fed into this garbage disposal unit while amazon and disney are fucking me up the ass jesus my son played that game when he was young <laughs> oh, terrible father oh no that's based Silent Hill, great. Great stuff. Yeah. RLP almost makes really. me well wish Middle Earth to be covered in a second darkness <laughs> just to spare us uh, Karen D.L. Karen D.L. Yeah. For, for five British pounds. Oh, and 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 Hal Bryan goes, you know, she's like, uh, oh, G Guy Ladriel says uh, to to find the light, sometimes you need to touch the darkness. He goes, what have you, what do you know of darkness? Yeah. Because I'm totally not Sauron. You're totally not Sauron. Totally not Sauron. All right. Hey, thanks, everybody. You guys are great. Thanks uh, for joining up. Dirty Sand for a membership. Uh, and we will see you next Thursday, midnight. Only three to go. Thank God. There's only it three to go. It picks up next week. It picks up. What? Oh, we get a battle. This is a fight. Yeah, it's going to be a fight. There's a fight in Cheetos. She gets covered in Cheetos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. That's you guys awesome. are great. You guys are awesome. Ciao, Bella. There are many ways to kill an orc. But for you, I will keep it strong and simple. Stab, <laughs> twist, gut. Come at me. All I know is that I can play. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.